Welcome to the fantasy audiobook. Hokage. Can't learn ninjutsu. I'll just practice immortality. Chapter 1. Asakawa, I'm sorry for what happened to your parents. However, I still hope you can cheer up. The village will be your home from now on. The middle-aged head teacher wearing glasses comforted somewhat sadly. I understand, teacher. Asakawa Naoki nodded lightly. Oh, the middle-aged head teacher sighed. You should go back to class. Half a month ago, Naoki Asakawa's parents encountered ninjas from an enemy village while performing a mission and died unfortunately, leaving only seven-year-old Naoki Asakawa alone. Before that, although Asakawa was a bit introverted and not good at communicating, he was also a good boy who worked hard and was serious, instead of giving up on himself like he is now. However, this is excusable. Even if such a thing happens to me, it is probably difficult to cheer up in a short time, let alone a child of six or seven years old. Naoki Asakawa slowly walked out of the office and walked towards his class. Part of the reason why he became like this was due to the death of his parents, but most of the reason was that he was not Naoki Asakawa at all. In other words, his soul is not Naoki Asakawa. He came from the Celestial Dynasty in the 21st century. He died suddenly because he stayed up late and played many games of the same era. He finally traveled to this world, and was lucky enough to travel to the body of Naoki Asakawa, whose soul collapsed due to the sudden death of his parents. Having obtained Naoki Asakawa's memory, he naturally took over Naoki Asakawa's identity and everything about him, and immediately understood the world he traveled through, the world of Hokage. One of the games he played for at that time was Hokage, and I had probably watched the anime once, so I was a little excited at the beginning. So at the very beginning, the class teacher saw Naoki Asakawa studying hard for a few days and thought that he would turn his grief and anger into strength and become a ninja to avenge his parents. However, he gave up on himself within a few days, which was what the class teacher was worried about. His reasons. In fact, it was not Naoki Asakawa who gave up on himself, but he discovered a problem. He cannot sense chakra. The foundation of becoming a ninja is chakra. Even taijutsu ninjas need chakra. But in Asakawa Naoki's memory, before he traveled to this body, although the amount was very small, the predecessor could refine chakra. After he traveled to this body but could not sense chakra, he thought about it and felt that it was probably because of the soul. Chakra is produced by the one. One fusion of spiritual power and physical power, but now that his soul comes from another world, it is normal that the spiritual power of the soul cannot be fused with physical power to form chakra. If you cannot refine chakra, you will naturally not be able to become a ninja. Naoki Asakawa was a little disappointed at first, but after going to college, he was no longer a child and was able to weigh the pros and cons. His predecessor was not from a ninja clan, and his parents' abilities were only Chunin and Genin. In this eye legend where blood is supreme, no matter how hard you try, you may not be able to achieve Jonin in your lifetime. In this case, maybe not being a ninja is a good thing. I don't know where my parents were in my previous life. I had to run around for money since I was a child. In the end, I died suddenly because of making money. Now I have a chance to live again, and my parents in my previous life also left him a large pension. In this life, maybe it's not bad to be a salted fish who doesn't have to worry about money. Thinking about it, Asakawa Naoki walked to his seat, the corner of the back row of the classroom, his predecessor's favorite seat, and he didn't hate it either. Then, he started another day of salted fish. All roads lead to Rome. Since you are no longer planning to be a ninja, you can just go to the ninja school. In your last life, apart from taking classes, you worked part-time to make money. Why not take a break now? Classmates, there is a new classmate coming to our class today. Welcome, the teacher brought in a red-haired girl about six years old. Let me introduce myself to everyone. After the teacher said this, he took a few steps back and handed the podium to the red-haired girl. Hello everyone, my name is Kashina Uzumaki, I am seven years old this year. The red-haired girl introduced herself as she looked at many classmates in the class, with a hint of vigilance and deep uneasiness in her eyes as she had just arrived. Just when Kashina was introducing herself, the six- or seven-year-old classmates sitting in the audience had already started talking in low voices. Maybe it couldn't be called low voices. Even Naoki Asakawa, who was sitting in the back row, could hear everything clearly. Chu, 
it should be considered a loud noise. That guy, her red hair is so scary. The same color as blood. We in Konoha village and fire country don't have people with red hair like this. I've never seen anyone with red hair. He must be a foreigner, maybe a spy from another village. Her hair is red and looks like a tomato. Let's call her little tomato from now on. I think she looks more like chili pepper. Let's call her little chili pepper from now on. Little tomatoes, little peppers, ha ha, quote dot 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 quote. Listening to the future classmates in the audience giving themselves nicknames when they first met, Kashina couldn't help but get angry in her eyes even though she had been telling herself to be patient. If possible, Kashina just wants to stay in the country of Uzumaki for the rest of her life. The feeling of living under someone else's roof is the same wherever she is, even in Konoha who has good relations with the country of Uzumaki. The teacher standing next to the whirlpool Kashina did not stop the noise of the students in the audience but watched it all silently. Looking at the teacher's silence, and then glancing at a young man with yellow hair sitting in the front row who just smiled and remained indifferent, Asakawa Naoki in the back row of the classroom finally couldn't stand it anymore. Hey, you childish guys, can you have a good time in class? Asakawa Naoki's voice was not loud, but it miraculously silenced the originally noisy class atmosphere. Almost all the students turned their heads to look in the direction of Asakawa Naoki, even the teacher standing on the podium and Uzumaki Kashina were no exception. The students in the class may not have expected that there would be someone in this class who not only did not join them in teasing the new classmates, but instead opposed them and immediately turned their guns and pointed them at Naoki Asakawa. Asakawa, you cowardly idiot. A male classmate spoke first. That's right, the bottom of the barrel will always be the bottom of the barrel. It's hard for you to even become a ninja. Another classmate also echoed. Don't think that we won't dare to hit you if you look better. Another boy threatened. This boy is right. Among a group of six or seven-year-old children, Naoki Asakawa, who is also only seven years old, has a slender figure and a handsome face. He is very popular among the girls in the class because of his rapid growth, and the yellow-haired boy Namikaze Minato are known as the most handsome men in the class. It's a pity that Naoki Asakawa's predecessor was not very strong, so he got the nickname, The Crane End. Ha, huh, what a bunch of childish ghosts who won't grow up. Naoki Asakawa chuckled. You short winter melons, fat pumpkins, ugly watermelons, and pockmarked faces can only laugh at others and not see your own shortcomings. What Naoki Asakawa said completely angered the classmates who had just laughed at Kashina the most. It would be okay if the nicknames they chose were inappropriate. The key point was that the nicknames he chose were very consistent with their body shape and appearance, as if they were tailor-made. Even the way other students in the class looked at them was wrong. No way, Asakawa Naoki's ability to choose nicknames is indeed quite good, and he perfectly treats others in his own way, allowing them to also taste the feeling of being laughed at. In fact, Naoki Asakawa doesn't like to give others nicknames, and he wouldn't do it if they weren't too outrageous. Asakawa, you parentless idiot. A short and fat boy said angrily, it was the classmate nicknamed Short Winter Melon. Okay, let's start class. The teacher finally stopped this little farce. If it continues, both parents may be involved. Okay, you go down and find a seat and sit down. The teacher said. Uzumaki Kashina nodded, then walked straight to the back row of the classroom and sat next to Naoki Asakawa. Thank you, Uzumaki Kashina said looking at the black-haired boy in front of her. In the situation just now, most of the people in the class were laughing at her long red hair, and those who didn't laugh at her mostly smiled and said nothing like the yellow-haired boy sitting in the front row. Even the teacher didn't care, only Naoki Asakawa spoke up to help her, directly attracting all the firepower to himself. For Uzumaki Kashina, who is in a foreign land and has just arrived, Naoki Asakawa can be said to be the only person in the class who can make her feel at ease. You're welcome, I just can't stand how they bully others, Asakawa Naoki said softly. Although Naoki Asakawa knew the identity of Kashina Uzumaki, he really had no other intention when he spoke out to help her just now. He just couldn't stand those childish ghosts bullying people. Maybe they haven't realized it yet, but what they did just now is obvious school bullying. Although Asakawa Naoki was not bullied in his previous life in China, he hated bullying in his heart. He couldn't become a ninja anyway, he might drop out of school after a while, 
and he wouldn't care about the looks of the classmates in the class. Well, thank you anyway, Uzumaki Kashina nodded and stretched out a hand towards Naoki Asakawa. My name is Uzumaki Kashina. Seeing this, Naoki Asakawa was stunned for a moment and quickly reacted. He also stretched out a hand to gently hold Kashina's little hand and said with a smile. First time we meet, I am Naoki Asakawa. Feeling the warmth from Naoki Asakawa's palm, the haze of leaving home in Uzumaki Kashina's heart seemed to lessen a lot, and the heart beating in her chest became much more stable. The first year curriculum at Konoha Ninja School is quite simple. School ends the earliest among the ninja schools. It ends at around 3 o'clock in the afternoon and before 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Asakawa, I'm going back first. Uzumaki Kashina waved her hand towards Asakawa Naoki. Well, you go first. Asakawa Naoki nodded. After Uzumaki Kashina left, Asakawa Naoki packed his things. If nothing else happened, he would not come to ninja school again in a few days. Relying on the pension from his original parents, maybe he can start a small business in Konoha to make a living, but he has to grow up first, and he is still too young now. It's okay if I can't become a ninja. When my business is done, I might be able to hire ninjas to be my bodyguards. Naoki Asakawa laughed at himself. After walking out of the classroom, Asakawa Naoki was about to leave the school and go home all the way, but out of the corner of his eye he saw a red-haired figure blocked in a corner by several classmates. Little Tomato, you are quite arrogant. If the teacher hadn't been here, we would have taught you a lesson in the classroom. And Asakawa, that timid little guy, he doesn't dare to leave the classroom today. We'll give him a lesson together tomorrow. The people who blocked Uzumaki Kashina in the corner of the school were the most mocked people in the first grade class. After being nicknamed by Naoki Asakawa, Shinobu became more and more angry as he thought about it, and finally blocked Kashina here directly after school. Be prepared to teach her a lesson first. It's none of Asakawa-san's business, just come to me if you have anything to do. Uzumaki Kashina's eyes were full of stubbornness, she didn't want Asakawa to be bullied because of herself. Hey, little tomato, you can't even protect yourself. Are you still thinking about that traitor Asakawa? Taro Yamama, who was nicknamed Dwarf Melon by Naoki Asakawa, laughed and said, although they are both seven years old, Taro Yamama is only less than 1.2 meters tall, even shorter than Kashina. No wonder he gets off guard when called Dwarf Melon. However, Taro Yamama felt quite good at this moment. Standing behind him were Matsushita Murato, nicknamed Fat Pumpkin, Ugly Watermelon and Pockmarked Face, showed Amita and Heiji Sato, giving him great confidence. How could a little girl who had just transferred to another school beat four boys of the same age as them? With this red hair, you are not a murderer, are you? Taro Yamama mocked. Didn't anyone teach you to hide your red hair when you go out? With that said, Yamataro was about to pull the long red hair of Kashina Uzumaki. Hair pulling is the best way to deal with girls, especially long-haired girls like Kashina. You guy, this red hair is proof of the Uzumaki clan. It is obviously the most noble hair color in the country of Uzumaki. Uzumaki Kashina really doesn't understand why she is bullied because of her hair color in Konoha. In fact, even if Uzumaki Kashina's hair is the most common black, there is a high probability that she will be bullied when she first transfers to another school. These bullies just want a reason to bully others. Uzumaki Kashina was about to resist, but Matsushita Matsushita and Mita Shota had already grabbed Kashina's hands in advance. Although the chakra of the Uzumaki clan far exceeded that of ordinary ninjas, Kashina, who was only seven years old, was unable to break away from two boys of the same age in terms of strength. Be careful, little tomato is very powerful. Matsushita warned. Don't worry, is it possible that a girl like her can beat the four of us? Sato Heiji said with a contemptuous smile, but he didn't notice that a figure had approached the four of them from behind. Let that girl go. A familiar voice came from behind. When the four members of Yamataro heard the voice and were about to turn around, a fist had already hit the short Dongwa Yamataro in the face, hitting his nose. It hurts. Yamataro felt warm liquid flowing out of his nose, and a strong fishy smell flowed into his mouth. The pain in his nose made him unable to hold back tears. Asakawa, you traitor. Taro, are you okay? The four bullies did not expect Naoki Asakawa to come up and greet him directly in the face. 
After experiencing the moment of confusion, they quickly reacted and let go of Kashina. They clenched their fists and pointed at Naoki Asakawa. Asakawa, you are looking for death. Beat the traitor first. From the beginning to the end, the foursome failed to understand why Asakawa, the low-profile person, wanted to help Kashina, the foreign transfer student, instead of standing on their side and bullying Kashina with them, so they directly regarded Asakawa Naoki as the traitor of the class. Traitors are often more hateful than enemies. At this moment, the fists thrown at Asakawa were not held back at all. The six- or seven-year-old child did not even know what holding back meant. He hit Asakawa Naoki with his small fist with all his strength, and it felt as painful as hail hitting his body. Four people and eight fists overwhelmed him, and he could only protect his head and vital parts as much as possible. Fortunately, I haven't learned how to use chakra in the first grade, otherwise I might not only feel pain, but also be beaten to death by random punches. Fortunately, Naoki Asakawa was not alone. Kashina, who was ignored by the four people, was very loyal and had no idea of escape. She kicked Sato Heiji in the back with all her strength and kicked him away several meters. Naoki Asakawa also seized the opportunity and kicked Shota Mita in the vital part of the crotch with a provocative kick, which directly caused him to lose his combat effectiveness in a short time, and also gave the other two people a chill in their crotches. Seeing that there was no chance to tease the vaginal legs, Asakawa Naoki directly knocked down the short winter melon mountain taro and hit him in the face with his fist, forcing him to protect his face with both hands. It is better to cut off one finger than to injure five of them. When fighting in a group, you have to fight one person. This is what Naoki Asakawa learned on TV in his previous life. The last Matsushita tried to pull Asakawa Naoki away but was unable to do so. He could only hit him with fists and kicks, but Asakawa Naoki was so cruel that the more he hit him, the more frightened he became. On the other side, although she didn't know how to fight, with her stubbornness, Uzumaki Kashina had the upper hand against Sato Heiji and the injured Mita Shota. Although she also received a few punches, Sato Heiji and the two were also injured. Not light. Stop everyone. There was an angry shout, and the head teacher of class 1, grade 1, pulled Naoki Asakawa away from Taro Yamama and separated Kashina Uzumaki from the other two. Next to the head teacher Masaki Yuto, the yellow-haired Namikaze Minato helped the injured Uzumaki Kashina up, but was thrown away by the latter. Apparently, Namikaze Minato also saw Kashina being bullied by the four short winter melons. Unlike Naoki Asakawa who went directly, he chose to call the teacher. In fact, Asakawa Naoki also wanted to call the teacher, but the teacher's inaction when they bullied Kashina in the classroom made him give up. Such a teacher simply cannot, or will not, put an end to bullying. If you want to end bullying, you can only make the bully feel the pain himself. Anyway, Asakawa Naoki has decided to drop out of school. Even if he fights, it will have no impact. He just can't stand the bully's behavior. At this time, Naoki Asakawa did not notice that in the senior class, an interested gaze followed the show from beginning to end. The owner of the gaze seemed to be quite interested in him. You six, go back and write a self-criticism at night and hand it over to me tomorrow. Said the head teacher Masaki Yudo. As expected, Asakawa Naoki didn't ask about the reason or the experience, but just punished everyone together. It is because of teachers who do nothing that school bullying is so serious and these bullies are so rampant. Asakawa Naoki looked at Yamataro and the other four, looking at the fear that could not be concealed in their eyes. He knew that the purpose of today's beating was achieved. Even if he dropped out of school later, the four of them would not dare to bully Kashina. Asakawa-kun, why do you want to help me? On the way out of school, Uzumaki Kashina was a little curious and said with some emotion in her eyes. If the support in the classroom only touched Kashina's heart slightly, then Naoki Asakawa's direct action just now really touched her heart. After leaving the country of Whirlpool, Naoki Asakawa was the first person in this foreign country who was willing to help her achieve this. Because I can't stand their behavior, and we can be considered friends. Naoki Asakawa wanted to smile but because of the pain at the corner of his broken mouth, his smile turned out to be extremely ugly, and it was simply a bitter smile. However, such a bitter smile made Uzumaki Kashina's face burst into a heartfelt smile. The word, friend, is really good. We are friends. From now on, 
I will call you Naoki, and you can call me Kashina. Kashina laughed. In Japan, only close people can call a person's name. Most people call each other's last name or full name. For example, the foursome who bullied Kashina called them Asakawa. However, Naoki Asakawa, who traveled from China, did not have many taboos. Without him, there are too many people with the same surname in the ninja world, so it is more convenient to call them by their first names. Okay, Kashina, Naoki Asakawa smiled. Thank you for today, Naoki. Uzumaki Kashina also smiled. Although her body was still a little sore, her heart felt warm. This was the first time she felt this feeling after coming to Konoha. You're welcome, I'm leaving first. Asakawa Naoki waved his hand. The two walked in two directions. Soon after they separated, Asakawa Naoki took a breath and felt a burst of pain in his body. The four Taro Yamayamas were indeed seven-year-old children, but Asakawa Naoki's current body was only seven years old. Years old, it still hurts a lot when hit. Fortunately, he protected his vital parts very well. Only his left eye was hit in a circle, and it is probably slowly swollen now. Although his body was in pain, Naoki Asakawa had no regrets, as this is how you should deal with bullies. It's a pity that he can't become a ninja. Once Yamaduro and others learn ninjutsu, he may not be able to defeat them. Forget it, the second ninja war is about to break out. Maybe a few of them will go to the battlefield and become cannon fodder as soon as they become ninjas. Naoki Asakawa sighed in his heart. Being a ninja also has its disadvantages. Just stay in Konoha. As long as you leave temporarily when pain attacks, there will be no danger. However, to be fair, Naoki Asakawa still really wants to become a strong person. After finally traveling through time, can I only be an ordinary person in the future? It would be fine if he became an ordinary person in the peaceful celestial empire in his previous life, but when he traveled to the dangerous and magnificent world of the ninja world and became an ordinary person who could not decide his own destiny or even life and death, Asakawa Naoki was really unwilling to do so. After walking some distance, Asakawa Naoki finally returned to a somewhat remote house. It is now the 34th year of Konoha. After decades of development, the central area of Konoha has been occupied by commercial streets and those wealthy ninja clans. Although the original parents were ninjas, they were just ordinary chunin. The house naturally cannot be located in the center of Konoha where land is at a premium. After returning home, Asakawa Naoki walked into his room, closed the door and window, and slowly took out a simple white scroll. This is the scroll he found at a stall in the Celestial Dynasty before he traveled through time. After traveling through time, Naoki Asakawa thought the scroll contained some powerful ninjutsu, but there was nothing on the scroll. Naoki Asakawa once tried to sprinkle a little water on the scroll, but there was no writing. He also lit a lamp and put the scroll on the lamp to bake, but there was also no writing, and even a drop of blood was useless. After trying several common methods of making handwriting visible but failing to make the writing appear on the scroll, Asakawa Naoki finally gave up. When Naoki Asakawa unfolded the scroll and saw that the scroll was blank, he felt helpless. Although the scroll followed him to the ninja world, he didn't know how to use it. Asakawa Naoki rolled up the scroll and put it away. After calming down for a while, he opened the scroll again, but there was still nothing on the scroll. No matter how you looked at it, it was a blank scroll. Perhaps, I should accept that I can only be an ordinary person. There's nothing wrong with ordinary people. They're not as dangerous as ninjas. Asakawa Naoki comforted himself, people can't live with themselves. But, I still want to become a ninja. Naoki Asakawa took out the scroll left by his original parents and opened it. It was not as blank as his white scroll. It not only contained the chakra refining technique in neat handwriting, but also the learning experience and notes of his original parents. After time travel, Asakawa Naoki has read the scroll recording the chakra refining technique hundreds of times. He has tried chakra refining thousands of times according to the method recorded above, but he cannot sense even a little chakra. As long as he can refine chakra, even if the amount is small, Naoki Asakawa can choose to become a taijutsu ninja. With a thousand times of effort, he is confident of becoming a ninja like Metkai and Rock Lee. But the reality is that Naoki Asakawa really can't sense a trace of chakra. Can't even become a taijutsu ninja. In fact, 
Naoki Asakawa also has some clues. According to the records on the scroll, Chakra is a one, one fusion of spiritual power and physical power. But now Naoki Asakawa's body is indeed that of Naoki Asakawa, but his soul is a soul from another world, celestial dynasty. The spiritual power and physical power of another soul cannot be integrated. This is the biggest possibility that he cannot perceive chakra. After sensing chakra according to the method on the scroll, he failed again. Can we just give up? Unwilling to be reconciled, Naoki Asakawa put the scroll of chakra refining technique back on the bookshelf, took out the white scroll again, recalling the chakra refining technique left by his parents in his heart, and opened the scroll as if resigned to his fate. This time, the originally blank scroll was filled with text. Chikawa Naoki looked at the front of the scroll, his black pupils were full of shock and excitement, and Kakuzu couldn't help but raise his broken mouth, but at this moment, even the pain seemed to have disappeared. Basic Chi Refining Technique Cultivation in the Four Realms, Refining Essence into Chi, Refining Chi into Spirit, Refining Spirit into Void, Refining Void into Tao. Naoki Asakawa read through the basic chi refining technique recorded on the scroll and made up his mind. I didn't expect that it would be the path to immortality. I didn't expect that, although I can't refine chakra and become a ninja, I might be able to become an immortal. Asakawa Naoki's breathing was a little rapid. Although refining chakra is also a training system, the upper limit of ninja is also very high. If you can swallow the chakra fruit, you can become a being with a lifespan of thousands of years like the Otsutsuki clan. But the road of ninja is still too narrow. It basically comes from the Otsutsuki clan and the fruit of the sacred tree, and is controlled by others. Moreover, refining chakra requires consuming one's own mental and physical strength, squeezing one's own cells and potential, and causing huge losses to oneself. If the chakra is used up, one will die directly. In contrast, Cultivating immortals not only allows people to gain powerful power, but also allows them to live longer than ordinary people. The depletion of mana absorbed from the outside world will not have serious side effects on the cultivators. Anyone with a discerning eye can see that the road to immortality is broader and the future is brighter. If you can become an immortal, who would want to become a ninja? From today on, I will no longer be a ninja. In the future, I will become a true sage in the ninja world. After calming down his excitement, Asakawa Naoki finally started practicing. It's not advisable to open champagne at half-time. If you can't practice the basic chi refining technique, you'll be in despair. According to the description of the basic chi refining technique, people who cultivate immortality also have conditions, and that is spiritual roots. Spiritual roots are not real substances. They are more like ethereal things like the soul, which cannot be directly observed. But only those with spiritual roots can embark on the path of cultivating immortals, while those without spiritual roots can only be mortals for the rest of their lives. Spiritual roots are divided into ordinary five element spiritual roots and mutant spiritual roots, which are golden spiritual roots, wood spiritual roots, water spiritual roots, fire spiritual roots, and earth spiritual roots, while mutant spiritual roots are wind spiritual roots, thunder spiritual roots, and ice spiritual roots and other spiritual roots that do not belong to the five element spiritual roots. Monks with golden spiritual roots are suitable for practicing metal-based exercises and spells, while monks with wooden spiritual roots are suitable for practicing wood-based exercises and spells. Only those with the same spiritual root attributes can practice them. The spells are similar, but not as demanding as the exercises. It's just that practicing exercises with different attributes requires a lot of time and energy, and the power is weaker. This is somewhat similar to the chakra attribute in the ninja world. The ninjutsu that ninjas practice is basically the same as their own chakra attribute. If you want to practice ninjutsu that has no attributes, such as the wind release ninja practicing fire style ninjutsu, you may have to do twice the result with half the effort. However, according to the basic chi refining technique, the more spiritual roots a cultivator has, the better. In the early stages of cultivation, the fewer spiritual roots a cultivator has, the better. The fewer spiritual roots, the faster the cultivation speed. If there is only one kind of spiritual root, whether it is the five elements spiritual root or the mutated spiritual root, it is the best talent, which is called the heavenly spiritual root. Because the cultivators of Tianlingan only have one kind of spiritual root, they practice extremely quickly. 
they can often go through the process of refining qi and transforming into god within a few years. Immortal cultivators with dual spiritual roots are second, but they are not much slower. They can often enter the realm of refining qi and transforming into gods within 10 years. The gap between the three spiritual roots and the double spiritual roots is huge. The speed of cultivation is much slower. It may take decades. Only when you are dying can you step into the realm of refining qi and transforming into a god. It will be difficult to step into the third level of cultivating immortals in your lifetime. Realm, refining the spirit returns to the void. The four spiritual roots and the more five spiritual roots are also called miscellaneous spiritual roots. Not to mention the speed of cultivation, it is difficult to even reach the second level of immortality, refining qi and transforming into gods, and can only waste time in the realm of refining qi and transforming into gods. However, in the later stages of practice, when the realm of refining qi and transforming into gods is complete, if you want to break through to the realm of refining gods and returning to emptiness, you need the perfect five elements spiritual roots. At this stage, most immortal cultivators will use various methods to supplement their missing five elements spiritual roots. At this time, the five spiritual roots cultivators take advantage. But in fact, almost no five spiritual roots monks can achieve the perfection of qi refining and divine transformation in their lifetime. Fortunately, the basic qi refining technique records several methods for replenishing spiritual roots, and Asakawa Naoki still has a long way to go before he can achieve the perfection of qi refining and spiritualization, so there is no need to worry. The most important thing now is to determine whether Asakawa Naoki has spiritual roots and how many spiritual roots he has. The number of spiritual roots determines how far he can go on the road to immortality in the future. Although I don't know the origin of the basic qi refining technique, this cultivation method has been improved by countless powerful immortal cultivators. It can be said to be the most basic cultivation method. Although there are no special bonuses, there are no spiritual root requirements, whether it is ordinary both five elements spiritual roots and mutated spiritual roots can be cultivated. Naoki Asakawa repeatedly read the first level of basic qi refining about refining qi, and started practicing for the first time until he became proficient in it. On the road to cultivating immortality, the so-called essence, energy, and spirit are the body of the cultivator, qi is the magic power of the cultivator, and shen is the consciousness of the cultivator. In the first stage of cultivating immortality, refining qi means refining qi and cultivating magic power. Only when you have cultivated the first ray of magic power can you officially enter the path of cultivating immortality. Naoki Asakawa was trying to figure out the formula for the basic qi refining technique. This first level of immortal cultivation was somewhat similar to the chakra training in the ninja world. Ninja refining chakra requires the extraction of physical power and the fusion of mental power to form chakra. Immortal cultivators, on the other hand, refine the essence in their bodies to form magic power, which is actually similar to refining chakra. However, after entering the second realm of cultivating immortals and refining energy to become gods, cultivators can directly absorb the spiritual energy of heaven and earth to refine it into mana, and obtain energy from the outside world, which will cause much less damage to the body. The reason why the spiritual energy of heaven and earth cannot be absorbed directly from the outside world in the first realm is mainly because the spiritual energy of heaven and earth is too violent and cannot be controlled well by the cultivators of the first realm, and it is actually harmful. After entering the second realm and cultivating spiritual consciousness, you can absorb the spiritual energy of heaven and earth more easily. In this aspect, it is somewhat similar to sage jutsu in the ninja world. After all, Sage Jutsu in the ninja world is formed by fusing physical energy, mental energy and natural energy. Its power is far more powerful than chakra. Could it be that natural energy is the spiritual energy of heaven and earth recorded in the basic qi refining technique? So, if I can break through to the second level, it will be equivalent to directly cultivating sage mode. At that time, my strength will probably not be weaker than the shadows of the five villages. Naoki Asakawa had a lot of guesses in his mind, and shook his head to get rid of the many distracting thoughts in his mind. After his heart was completely calm, he sat cross-legged on the bed, closed his eyes and recited the mantra silently to start his first practice. At this moment, Asakawa Naoki felt that he had entered a strange state. Everything around him seemed to have disappeared. 
only strands of chi were like small snakes traveling through the meridians in his body. This was his chi. At the same time, in his world, a thunderbolt struck in the sky, fell on the ground and turned into a ball of flame. Thunder flashed wildly, the sky was shrouded in thunder, and the flames on the ground became more and more intense, devouring the earth, and the two began to gradually occupy Asakawa Naoki's entire world. After an unknown amount of time, when the thunder that occupied the sky and the flames that devoured the earth met, Asakawa Naoki finally woke up slowly. It seems that I have the twin spiritual roots of fire and thunder. Even in the world of immortal cultivators, I can be considered a genius. There was still a bit of excitement in Asakawa Naoki's opened eyes. Although he was not the fastest cultivating top-level heavenly spiritual root, he was satisfied with having both the mutated thunder spiritual root and the fire spiritual root. Thunder spiritual root and fire spiritual root are both spiritual roots known for their fierce attacks. The cultivation speed of the double spiritual root is only slightly slower than that of the heavenly spiritual root, and there is almost no pressure to break through to refine chi and become a god. Feeling the magic power flowing through the meridians in his body, Naoki Asakawa smiled. Although this ray of magic is still very weak, he is confident that he will never be weaker than those top ninjas in the future. Maybe at this time, Asakawa Naoki has not realized that he can successfully cultivate magic power in his first practice and officially embark on the path of immortality. This is not something that can be achieved with dual spiritual roots. His talent is even better than most top geniuses. The monks with spiritual roots are even stronger. From now on, I can be considered an immortal cultivator. Asakawa Naoki got out of bed. Before he was excited for a long time, a huge hunger seemed to crush him. I'm so hungry, I'm going to starve to death. This was a hunger Asakawa Naoki had never felt before, as if he hadn't eaten for several days. But almost instantly he understood the reason. Although the ray of magic power in his body seemed very weak, it actually consumed a lot of energy to cultivate it. It consumed almost all the energy stored in his body, so he was like this, hunger. No way, I just became a cultivator, I can't just starve to death. Asakawa Naoki quickly opened the door. The living room was not dim in the evening as expected. The sun shone into the room through the window, and it was still warm. It was after three o'clock when the ninja school ended. He was delayed for some time because of the violent beating of the foursome. Asakawa Naoki got home around five o'clock. It's summer now, the days are long and the nights are short. The sun doesn't set until about seven o'clock, but the dazzling sunlight in front of you is definitely not what the sun can emit at six or seven o'clock. So, is it the second day? Or is it the third day? They say that there is no time to practice. It is true. I have been practicing for such a long time and I haven't noticed the passage of time. I seem to be late for school today. Asakawa Naoki quickly realized the problem. It was almost noon now, and the morning classes were probably almost over. If it were the seven-year-old Naoki Asakawa, he might have rushed to school in a panic. But for Naoki Asakawa, who has already gone to college and entered the society, no matter how big a deal it is to be late for school, he is about to starve to death, so let's eat first. He first found something to eat at home, and then drank some water, barely trying to get himself out of a state where he seemed to be starving to death. After hiding the scroll that recorded the basic chi refining technique, Naoki Asakawa walked out of the house with Chinliang and quickly rushed to a ramen restaurant in the commercial street to replenish energy. As a traveler from the celestial dynasty who was once very poor, he must know how to cook, but his current situation no longer allows him to cook and eat by himself, so it is easier to eat outside. Boss, two bowls of ramen first. Looking at Naoki Asakawa, who looked six or seven years old, the owner of the ramen shop said with some suspicion. Kid, the portion of my ramen is quite big. You can eat just one bowl and you'll be full. Don't worry, I can eat it. Naoki Asakawa nodded and said. Okay, two bowls of ramen or 100 tails. The ramen owner said helplessly. Although making money is important, he hates people wasting food. Not long after paying, the ramen boss placed two large bowls of ramen in front of Asakawa Naoki. He shook his head and returned to the kitchen. His impression of Asakawa Naoki was a little bad. If he hadn't finished one bowl, I'm afraid the boss will have a worse impression of him. It's finally here. Asakawa Naoki looked at the two steaming bowls of ramen in front of him. 
The portions were indeed very large. If it was him before, he might not be able to eat even one bowl. But today, he is no longer the Naoki Asakawa of the past, he is now Naoki Asakawa, the immortal cultivator. After taking a sip of hot noodle soup and then a sip of noodles, Asakawa Naoki began to cook rice quickly and elegantly. In less than 10 minutes, the bottom of the first bowl of ramen was gone, and after a while, the second bowl of ramen was also eaten. With food in his stomach, Asakawa Naoki began to run the basic chi refining technique. As the weak mana flowed through his meridians, he could feel the mana in his body slowly getting stronger. This feeling of getting stronger is so good. Naoki Asakawa sighed in his heart. As the magic power increased, the food in the body was also digested rapidly, leaving Asakawa Naoki who was not full to begin with. The taste of this ramen shop may not be as good as the legendary Ichiraku ramen, but at least it is cheap and filling. And Ichiraku ramen hasn't opened yet, so I can't even try it if I want to. Boss, two more bowls of ramen. Seeing Naoki Asakawa again, looking at the two empty bowls on the table, the ramen shop owner was a little shocked, as if he didn't expect that a six or seven year old child could actually eat two bowls of ramen. However, since the customers would not waste food, the ramen boss would naturally not be left without money, so he brought two more bowls of ramen with a smile. After knowing that Naoki Asakawa could really eat, the ramen boss had a lot of attitude toward him, but he still had some doubts about his identity. This child is so good at eating, could he be a child of the Akamaiki family? But aren't the children of the Akamaiki family quite fat? And the children of the Akamaiki family don't seem to be so handsome. The ramen boss guessed in his mind. While Naoki Asakawa was still working hard, there was someone in the ninja school who was worried about his absence. Uzumaki Kashina was still sitting next to Naoki Asakawa's usual seat in the back row of the classroom, looking at the empty seat next to her with worry in her eyes. Naoki didn't come to school because he was too seriously injured in the fight yesterday, right? It's all my fault. If it weren't for me, Naoki wouldn't have to fight with them or get hurt. If I can become stronger, I can protect him. After school in the afternoon, I have to ask my teacher Naoki for his home address. I hope nothing happens to him. It's all these guys' fault. Uzumaki Kashina suddenly looked at Taro Yamama and the four people sitting in the middle of the classroom, which made the four of them feel chilled. They looked back as if they were feeling something, and met Kashina's cold eyes, and their bodies couldn't help but shudder. It was obviously summer, but Kashina's eyes made them feel like they were back in winter. She's so good, why bother with her? The four of them, Taro Yamayama, all regretted why they had to give their new classmates nicknames yesterday. In fact, the four of them didn't know that the real reason for Kashina's anger was that they heard her only friend here, Naoki Asakawa. If Taro Yamama and the other four were just bullying her, I'm afraid she wouldn't be so angry, but Kashina would be really angry if her friends were hurt because of her. Therefore, don't guess what a girl is thinking, because you can never guess it accurately. The noon time passed quickly, and the first class of class 1 in the first grade in the afternoon was the class of the class teacher Masaki Yudo. After school yesterday, several classmates in our class got into a fight inside the school, Masaki Yudo glanced around, his eyelids twitched slightly when he noticed that Asakawa Naoki was not here, and then said. Now, hand in your apology letter. If this happens again in the future, I will notify your parents. After the head teacher's words fell, Yamataro and the other four people sitting in the middle of the classroom tremblingly walked up to the podium and handed over the self-reflection they had stayed up all night to write on the podium. Just as Uzumaki Kashina was about to get up and hand over the self-reflection she had written to the teacher, Naoki Asakawa walked into the classroom of class 1, grade 1. Sorry, teacher, I'm late. Asakawa Naoki said, I won't do it next time. After seeing that Asakawa Naoki was fine, Masaki Yudo finally let go of his hanging heart and asked, Asakawa, where is your confession? I did nothing wrong, why should I write a review? Naoki Asakawa said with innocence in his eyes. If you forgot to write it down, you have to tell it honestly. Head teacher Masaki Yudo frowned and said. If you forget to write it, just write it again. There is no need to find reasons to cover up the fact that you didn't write it. Because of his cultivation, Naoki Asakawa did forget about the letter of apology, but even if he had not forgotten, he would not have written the letter of apology. 
Because, he did nothing wrong, why should he review it? Under the gaze of all the students in class 1, grade 1, Asakawa Naoki shook his head and asked. Teacher, I just saw Kashina-san being bullied and that's why I went to fight with Yamayama-san. Is it wrong to help my classmates? Looking at Asakawa Naoki's calm look, Masaki Yudo felt like he had met him for the first time today. In Masaki Yudo's memory, Asakawa Naoki has always been a student with a timid personality and a thin sense of presence. Unexpectedly, he now not only dares to fight with other classmates, but also dares to talk back to himself. Is it because of the sudden death of his parents that his personality has mutated? Masaki Yudo guessed in his heart. Some time ago, he also counseled Asakawa due to the death of his parents. Masaki Yudo expressed sympathy for his experience. But Masaki Yudo had to severely reprimand Naoki Asakawa for daring to question his behavior. Now in the first grade, he dares to go against himself. If he can't suppress it, it will be difficult to lead this class. The original intention of helping your classmates is correct, but your behavior is wrong. The head teacher Masaki Yudo scolded. When you encounter someone bullying your classmates, you should go to the teacher immediately instead of fighting with them. The whole class should learn from Namikaze Minato-san in this regard. He found me immediately after he found out that you were fighting. Asakawa looked at Minato Namikaze, who was sitting in the front row. Kashina, who was sitting in the back row, also looked at Minato Namikaze. Most of the eyes in the class were focused on him. At this time, Minato Namikaze, who was only seven years old, could only reveal a little bit. He smiled bitterly, feeling a little regretful. Although calling the teacher can be recognized by the teacher, most students don't seem to like this way of solving problems. Especially the transfer student Uzumaki Kashina who was sitting in the back row. Minato Namikaze felt a chill behind him. This Kashina classmate seemed to be a little hostile to him. Do you realize your mistake? Masaki Yudo looked at Asakawa Naoki and asked, and other students in the class also looked at Asakawa Naoki, waiting for his answer. Teacher, although violence cannot solve the problem, it can make people remember the pain. Asakawa Naoki looked at Yamataro's foursome. When he looked over, the four of them lowered their heads, not daring to look at Asakawa. Yesterday, Asakawa acted like a madman during the fight. They are still a little scared. If they can't overcome this fear, they may avoid Asakawa when they see him in the future. If this pain is not remembered, this kind of bullying will continue to happen in the future, even if the teacher intervenes. Asakawa Naoki looked at Masaki Yudo, and the head teacher's face became extremely ugly at this time. Asakawa, please go out and stand for punishment. Good teacher. Naoki Asakawa responded, walked out shortly after entering the classroom door, and stood leaning against the outer wall of the classroom. In fact, there were many unpleasant things that he didn't say. When Naoki Asakawa watched Hokage in his previous life, he knew that bullying among children in Konoha was very serious. Not only was Uzumaki Kashina bullied as a child, but decades later, little Naruto was also isolated and bullied by other children. Even Hanada, the eldest daughter of the Hyuga clan, was bullied by other children because of her white eyes when she was a child. In his opinion, the fundamental reason why this kind of bullying has not disappeared is, apart from family education, the teachers in the school who do not take it seriously. Whether it was Masaki Yudo, the head teacher of class 1, or the teacher who attended class yesterday, they were quite indifferent to the bullying of Kashina by class 1 students and almost didn't care. Even after the fight, Masaki Yudo dealt with it as if they were fighting each other. He didn't even ask why Asakawa Naoki and Uzumaki Kashina were fighting. In a sense, teachers' silence about bullying is support for bullies. It is because of these indifferent teachers and bullies like Taro Yamama that they bully others so arrogantly. It doesn't matter if you stand outside for a while, you just finished eating four bowls of ramen, it's just a good time to practice and gather more mana. Asakawa Naoki stopped caring about the affairs of the class and stood outside the classroom and started practicing. In the classroom, when Naoki Asakawa walked out of the classroom and stood up, Uzumaki Kashina, who was originally going to hand in the self-reflection letter, tore the self-reflection letter in half and hid it in her bag, and walked to the podium empty-handed. Teacher, I haven't written a self-reflection letter yet, Kashina said. In her heart, 
Uzumaki Kashina also didn't feel that she had done anything wrong, and writing a self-reflection letter was just a matter of coping. Now Naoki Asakawa was kicked out of the classroom and made to stand for not writing a self-criticism, so how could she stay in the classroom and sit by herself? Such behavior was a betrayal of Naoki. Okay, okay, you should also stand outside the classroom for me. Masaki Yudo roared angrily. Okay teacher. Uzumaki Kashina ran out of the classroom in a flash and stood next to Naoki Asakawa. Are you here to stand for punishment too? Asakawa Naoki looked at Kashina and asked. Well, you were made to stand because of me. I can't abandon you just like that. The girl nodded and said with a slightly red face. And I don't think we did anything wrong. Haha, ha, it seems that we are indeed friends. Asakawa Naoki said with a smile. Kashina's straightforward personality since she was a child is quite easy to get along with. Haha, ha, Kashina also smiled. Although she was standing still, it felt good to stand outside because of the presence of another person. By the way, are you okay? I saw your eyes were a little swollen yesterday, but they seem better today. Kashina asked with concern. Yesterday, although the two of them suppressed and beat the four of Yamataro, the number of opponents was twice as many as theirs, and the two of them also suffered a lot of injuries. However, Kashina relied on the strong recovery power of the Uzumaki clan, and after one night, her injuries were basically recovered. I just didn't expect that an ordinary person, Naoki Asakawa, would have such strong resilience. After one night, his swollen eyes and broken corners of his mouth seemed to be back to normal. Moreover, I don't know if it is Kashina's illusion, but she feels that Naoki Asakawa looks better today than yesterday. In fact, this is really not an illusion, but after concentrating his magic power and becoming an immortal cultivator, he not only performed a small cleansing of Asakawa Naoki's body, but also solved the problem that he had been unable to do since he traveled here for half a month. The frustration of training to become a ninja made his temperament more confident. The small changes in body and temperament made Kashina feel that Naoki Asakawa became more beautiful. Well, my recovery is quite strong. Naoki Asakawa nodded. It has to be said that the basic chi refining technique is powerful. Although it consumes a lot of money, just condensing a ray of mana can restore all the injuries on his body and make his body stronger than before. However, this secret cannot be told to anyone yet, and it can only be attributed to the body's recovery power. Standing outside the classroom, Naoki Asakawa was practicing the basic chi refining technique while chatting with Kashina wordlessly. In his previous life in the Celestial Empire, he had never chatted with a girl for such a long time. Unexpectedly, he had his first female friend less than half a month after traveling to the ninja world. Thinking of the tragic fate of Kashina Uzumaki in the future, Naoki Asakawa decided to help her if there was a chance in the future. However, Due to the butterfly effect caused by his time travel, it is not certain whether tragedies will occur in the future. While taking advantage of the penalty stand, Asakawa Naoki also thought about his future. Without this sage jutsu scroll, he would be unable to enter the path of immortality and refined chakra, and he would probably become an ordinary person unable to decide his destiny. Therefore, Asakawa Naoki was planning to drop out of school directly, and when he was a little older, he would rely on his parents' inheritance to start a small business in Konoha and live a peaceful life. But things are different now. Although he is still very weak at this time, Asakawa Naoki firmly believes that he will become a strong man comparable to or even surpassing the god of ninja in the future. If it is light, it can be good for oneself, if it is great, it can help the world. Since he possesses powerful power, Asakawa Naoki naturally does not intend to live a peaceful life in silence. He wants to become a strong man and change the ninja world. But it is still too far away to say this now. Although Naoki Asakawa is certain that he will definitely become a strong person in the future, there are many strong people who fall before they grow up. Therefore, his current strategy is to survive and develop first, and ninja school is the best safe zone for development, at least until the ninja war begins. In the later stages of the ninja world war, there was a shortage of personnel, and even the students in the ninja school who had not yet graduated would be forced to graduate early and let the students go to the battlefield. But now is the 34th year of Konoha, and there are still several years before the second ninja war, which is enough time for Naoki Asakawa to develop. Naoki Asakawa, Kashina Uzumaki, 
you two stand outside for me. This is punishment, not for you to chat. The voice of the head teacher Masaki Yudo came from the classroom, and he obviously noticed the two of them chatting in low voices. He did not expect that letting the two of them go out to stand for punishment was more enjoyable than being in the classroom. Being discovered by the class teacher, Kushina was also a little embarrassed. She did not continue to speak and stood silently against the wall, but it was obvious that she still had some unfinished thoughts in her heart. After the kingdom of Whirlpool was destroyed, no one could chat with her so happily. Naoki Asakawa did not continue chatting and began to devote himself to practice. Under his control, as the magic power circulated in the meridians for a week, the slender wisp of magic power increased again, and the growth was gratifying. When the get-out-of-class bell rang, the total amount of mana in Naoki Asakawa's body was nearly one-fifth more than before. If he kept practicing at such a fast pace, he expected his mana to triple today. Okay, Naoki Asakawa, Kushina Uzumaki, please go back to your seats and sit down. Masaki Yudo walked out of the classroom and looked at the two of them and said, you will be punished for cleaning the classroom this afternoon. The head teacher Masaki Yudo can't do anything. He can call the parents when other children fight. Naoki Asakawa and Kashina have both lost their parents. As long as they don't cause trouble in the future, he doesn't want to care about them. I understand, teacher. Naoki Asakawa and Kashina nodded. The two of them walked into the classroom together. Taro Yamama and the others did not dare to look at them at all. However, after seeing the bandaged wounds on Taro Yamama's body, the other students in the class also looked at the two with a bit of fear. Just hit them with one punch to avoid hundreds of punches. I'm afraid no one in the class will dare to cause trouble for the two of them in the future. Neither Naoki Asakawa nor Kashina likes to cause trouble. If others don't mess with them, they will naturally be happy and leisurely. It wasn't until school was over in the afternoon that a yellow-haired figure stood in front of the two of them. He had a handsome face and a gentle temperament. It was Minato Namikaze. Asakawa-san, Uzumaki-san, I'm sorry that I shouldn't have called the teacher yesterday. Namikaze Minato apologized. Looking at Namikaze Minato who was only seven years old in front of him, Asakawa Naoki had to admit his perfection. Whether it is strength, wisdom, appearance or even personality, Namikaze Minato is a pretty perfect ninja, which can be seen since he was a child. Their class does not have positions such as class president and academic committee, but Minato Namikaze's status in the class far exceeds that of anyone else. Not only can he get along well with everyone, he is also the favorite of almost all the girls in the class, and not many boys even hate him. The former is not bad. At the age of six or seven, as long as he is handsome, he will easily be liked by little girls. It goes without saying that Minato Namikaze has a handsome appearance. But the latter is difficult. No one among the boys hates him out of jealousy, which shows Minato Namikaze's personality charm. And now he even took the initiative to apologize to the two of them for looking for a teacher. His eyes were full of sincerity, which greatly increased Naoki Asakawa's affection for him. No wonder Jiraiya would say that in the future. Compared to Namikaze Minato, no one is good enough. Although Namikaze Minato is still very weak now, he will indeed be enough to serve as Konoha's fourth Hokage in the future. You did the right thing, no need to apologize, Kashina said angrily. Obviously, Kashina was talking about what the class teacher Masaki Yudo said, and she immediately went to the teacher when she saw her classmates fighting. It can be seen that Kashina is still a little resentful towards Namikaze Minato who is looking for a teacher. Namikaze san, there is no need to apologize, but we should thank you. Asakawa Naoki said sincerely. In yesterday's situation, after having already taught Yamataro and the four others a lesson, if Minato Namikaze hadn't come to find the teacher, they might still have had a hard time ending it. Even if the four were beaten down, their injuries would not have been so minor. The arrival of Masaki Yudo can bring a just right ending. Listening to the two people's answers, a trace of surprise flashed in Namikaze Minato's eyes. Kashina's answer was as expected. The student who was fighting hated the student who called him, teacher, and it was normal to have resentment towards him. However, Naoki Asakawa's sincere words were a bit unexpected, and he didn't say what he originally planned to say. Asakawa-san is a very calm person. Namikaze Minato said with emotion. 
This was the first time he had seen such a calm person of his age. Just call me Minato. Then please call me Naoki from now on. Okay, Naoki-san, Uzumaki-san, I'm going home first. After chatting for a while, Minato Namikaze waved and left the classroom first. After cleaning the classroom and packing up his things, Naoki Asakawa and Kashina Uzumaki also left the classroom together. When they walked out of the school side by side, Asakawa Naoki looked at Kashina who was still a little confused, knowing that she still didn't understand why she wanted to thank Namikaze Minato, so he explained. Kashina, are you curious why I want to thank Minato-san? Well, if it hadn't been for him, you wouldn't have been punished by the teacher. Kashina nodded. In fact, she didn't care about being punished. The main reason was that Naoki Asakawa was also punished. Actually, he should have discovered our fight a long time ago, Naoki Asakawa explained, but it happened that he called the teacher over just after we gave Yamataro and others a lesson. He grasps the timing very well. This not only ensures that we can teach Taro Yamayama a lesson, but also prevents us from going too far. Is this why you said you wanted to thank him? Kashina said, with surprise in her eyes. She didn't expect that at the same age of seven, Minato Namikaze could come up with so many things, and Naoki Asakawa could see through Minato Namikaze's thoughts, as if she was the only one who was kept in the dark. So that's it, Namikaze-san is so scheming. Kashina sighed, her vigilance against Minato Namikaze greatly increased. As for Naoki Asakawa, who can see through things, how can he be said to be scheming as his good friend? He should be said to be very smart. Seeing Kashina's vigilant look, Naoki Asakawa felt that he had made a mistake. I don't know how Kashina managed to establish a good relationship with Minato in a ninja world without her own existence. Forget it, even if there is no Naruto, Ashura Chakra will be reincarnated, as long as Kashina can live a happy life. In this world, Uzumaki Kashina's fate quietly changed the moment Naoki Asakawa chose to help her when she was bullied. After parting ways with Kashina, Asakawa Naoki had a big meal in a restaurant on the commercial street before heading home. Again, although you can cook for yourself, you still have money, so you don't have to waste your precious practice time. It was almost 5 o'clock when he got home. After an afternoon of practice, the mana in his body was one ray more than when he woke up in the morning, which doubled directly. Let's see if there are any new changes to the scroll first. After arriving home, Asakawa Naoki did not practice, but opened an inconspicuous white scroll. What was recorded in it was still the basic chi refining technique, with no increase or decrease. At the beginning yesterday, there was no basic chi refining technique in the scroll. Is it because of what I did that the basic chi refining technique appeared on the scroll? Asakawa Naoki thought about his behavior after returning home yesterday. At first, he thought the scroll was a wordless heavenly book, and used several common revealing methods to try to make the writing in the scroll visible. After all methods failed and he became disheartened, he put the scroll on the bookshelf, reluctantly took out the scroll of chakra refining technique, and looked at the chakra refining technique, but he still couldn't extract chakra. Let's repeat yesterday's steps first. Based on the experience of repeated experiments in his previous life, Asakawa Naoki first repeated yesterday's steps. It took more than half an hour, but nothing new appeared on the white scroll. Is there something missing somewhere? After thinking for a while, Asakawa Naoki spent half an hour conducting a repeated experiment. But this time there was still nothing new, and there was no change in the basic chi refining technique. No, it might have already appeared. An idea flashed in Naoki Asakawa's mind. Basic chi refining technique and chakra refining technique both belong to the gong method type. Chakra refining technique is the fusion of mental power and physical strength into chakra, and the first level of basic chi refining technique is the method of practice is to refine the energy and refine the magic power. The similarity between the two is extremely high. It is probably because Naoki Asakawa watched the chakra refining technique that the basic chi refining technique appeared on the scroll. So, I should try it out with the ninjutsu scroll now. Rather than action, Naoki Asakawa immediately took out a red scroll that he cherished very much from the bookshelf. In the memory of the original, this ninjutsu scroll was a birthday gift prepared by his parents. They were originally planned to be given to him when he graduated from the ninja school and became a real ninja. 
It's a pity that the original's parents were not able to see him graduate from the ninja school. Instead, they both died on the mission not long after the original's enrollment. The original's soul also left this world because he could not accept the reality and was too sad. In the end, he occupied the magpie's nest. Holding the red scroll, Naoki Asakawa seemed to sense the expectations of his original parents for him. You can rest well in that world, and I will bring peace to this world. After muttering a few words in his mind, Asakawa Naoki opened the red scroll. What was recorded in it was the fire-style ninjutsu that Konoha is best at, and it is also one of the ninjutsu that the Uchiha clan is best at. Fire-style Great Fireball Technique. Seal. Si Wei Shen Hai Wu Yin. Level. C Class Ninjutsu. Learning Methods. It turned out to be the Great Fireball Jutsu. Naoki Asakawa was a little surprised in his eyes. Don't underestimate the Great Fireball Jutsu just because it's only a C-level ninjutsu. Ninjutsu is divided into S-level, A-level, B-level, C-level, D-level and E-level according to the learning difficulty from high to low. Yes, although high-level ninjutsu are often more powerful, ninjutsu levels are not divided based on power, but based on learning difficulty. E-level is the lowest level of difficulty. The three techniques taught in the ninjutsu school, namely the clone technique, the substitute technique and the transformation technique, are the lowest level E-level ninjutsu. D-level ninjutsu Secondly, after graduating from a ninja school, those who lead a teacher or learn ninjutsu from their family, such as the inner decapitation technique, karigakur no jutsu, etc. are D-level ninjutsu, which belongs to the genin level ninjutsu. C-level ninjutsu is chunin level ninjutsu. If you can learn several C-level ninjutsu and use them flexibly, you can become a chunin. For the original parent who only has the strength of chunin, they can leave a C-level ninjutsu scroll to the original person as a gift for becoming a ninja, which shows the depth of their love for the original person. The C-level ninjutsu in front of you, the Great Fireball Jutsu, is one of the most commonly used ninjutsu by the Uchiha clan. Basically, every Uchiha ninja can use the Great Fireball Jutsu. Even after defecting to Konoha and joining the Akatsuki organization in the future, Uchiha Itachi, who has the strength of a shadow, the most commonly used ninjutsu is the Great Fireball technique, which shows its practicality. The technique of Great Fireball has no other characteristics, only three characteristics, easy to learn, easy to control, and powerful. I can't learn fire style Great Fireball, but I might be able to learn fireball. Naoki Asakawa doesn't have chakra, but he has magic power. After reading Fire Style Great Fireball Jutsu completely, Asakawa Naoki carefully placed the red scroll on the bookshelf and then opened the white scroll. The opening chapter is still the basic chi refining technique, but behind the basic chi refining technique, a the spell appears on the scroll. Samadhi True Fire. It's actually Samadhi True Fire. Asakawa Naoki's heart was full of surprises. The Samadhi True Fire was well known in the previous world. It was considered the most famous fire spell, and its power was needless to say. In the Romance of the Gods, Zhang Zia used Samadhi True Fire to burn half of Pippa Jing's life, and in Journey to the West, Taisheng Laojun even used Samadhi True Fire to help Sun Goku develop an indestructible body. After the surprise, Asakawa Naoki looked at the method of practicing Samadhi True Fire on the scroll. The True Fire of Samadhi the true fire of Samadhi is the fusion of the innate divine fire fire in wood, fire in stone and fire in the air. There will be powerful ones in the future who will simplify the acquired Samadhi true fire according to the innate Samadhi true fire, and replace the three innate divine fires with the fire of essence, the fire of chi and the fire of God, and merge them into the true fire of the acquired Samadhi. When you practice to the extreme, your offensive power is not weaker than the innate Samadhi true fire, and the same is true for alchemy and weapon refining. The fire of essence, monks need to refine the essence in the body and ignite the fire of essence. The fire of essence burns the body and even the weapons are invincible. With the fire of chi, monks need to ignite the mana in their bodies. The fire of mana can burn the mana of other monks, or the mana attached to the magic weapon. With the fire of God, monks need to ignite their own spiritual consciousness. The fire of divine consciousness directly attacks the souls of other monks, burning the souls without burning the body. It is extremely powerful. When the three fires are combined into one, they become the true fire of Samadhi, which burns everything and is extremely powerful. 
Naoki Asakawa read the complete method of practicing samadhi true fire. He was a little disappointed, but he quickly cheered up. Although this samadhi true fire is not the innate samadhi true fire in the romance of the gods or journey to the west, it is not that difficult to cultivate. Otherwise, he would not know how to find the three innate divine fires of wood and fire, stone and fire and air fire. Let alone practice. Moreover, the creator of Samadhi True Fire also said that once you practice to the extreme, your offensive power will not be weaker than the innate Samadhi True Fire. Looking at the description, the fire of essence can burn all matter, the fire of chi burns energy such as mana and chakra, and the last fire of God is a flame that can burn soul and mental power. Just by reading a little description, Naoki Asakawa can feel the power of Samadhi True Fire. After all, in the ninja world, even Amaterasu, who is known as the strongest fire style, cannot burn the soul. The divine fire of Samadhi True Fire can even burn to death the souls reincarnated from the dirty land. It's a pity that I can't cultivate the three types of flames now. Asakawa Naoki sighed. The power of Samadhi True Fire cannot be underestimated. If it is ninjutsu, it is definitely the strongest and most difficult to learn S-level ninjutsu. He didn't expect that the first spell he learned was such a powerful spell. He thought that fire style Great Fireball would become a low-level spell like Fireball. In that case, he could learn it now. But he was not disappointed. Anyway, the Ninja World War has not broken out yet. There is no need to fight for the time being, and there is still enough time for him to learn. Then, let's learn to ignite the fire of essence from now on. Asakawa Naoki began to practice. Among the true fires of Samadhi, the essence fire is the only one he can cultivate now. He has too little mana to ignite the chi fire. The same is true for the god fire, which requires him to at least step into the second realm of cultivating immortals to refine chi and become a god. Cultivation can only be done after spiritual consciousness appears. Fortunately, the practice of the fire of essence not only did not conflict with his practice of the basic chi refining technique, but actually complemented each other. According to the practice method of essence fire, he turns his body into a furnace to quench the essence and transform the mana. The mana that originally took nearly 10 minutes to operate for a week has been sped up a lot, and can now be operated in about 8 minutes. One day a week made his cultivation speed much faster. Under the quenching chain of flames, wisps of white smoke gradually emerged from Naoki Asakawa's body, and his skin gradually turned reddish like a steamed lobster. The food eaten at night is quickly digested in the body and turned into a large amount of essence. Part of it is refined into mana, and the other part continues to be refined, burning the body like a flame. Under the scorching heat of the essence fire, Asakawa Naoki's body temperature increased rapidly, and his speed and strength gradually increased. So hot, in such painful and joyful training, Asakawa Naoki's strength is getting stronger at a speed visible to the naked eye. Cultivation focuses on relaxation and moderation, especially refining chi in the first stage of cultivating immortality, which requires the consumption of physical strength. When the body is still weak, the physical strength is not strong enough. Excessive practice will only damage the foundation and be detrimental to the future. Although Naoki Asakawa was a little excited about learning Samadhi True Fire, in the end when the food in his body was almost digested, he washed up and lay on the bed and fell asleep. Naoki Asakawa left home early the next morning, came to the shopping street, and cooked four bowls of ramen under the watchful eye of the ramen boss before heading to the classroom before class. When Asakawa Naoki came to the classroom, the first-year classmates looked at him with a mixture of fear and curiosity. Many of them were still discussing something quietly with their classmates. Obviously, they never thought that Naoki Asakawa, who had always been timid and gentle before, could actually beat up Taro Yamama's foursome together with the transfer student Uzumaki Kashina. However, Naoki Asakawa ignored them at all. They were just a bunch of ignorant brats, and they would probably forget them in a short time. You were almost late, Kashina reminded, sitting at the back of the classroom. Although she looks like a bad student because of the fight, Kashina is actually a good child at heart and came to the classroom early. For some reason, Kashina felt that Naoki Asakawa seemed to have changed again today. His body seemed to have grown a little taller, and his skin had become smoother and stronger. Breakfast took a little longer. Asakawa Naoki said sitting next to Kashina. 
Not long after, the head teacher Masaki Yudo walked into the classroom. He glanced around and saw that Asakawa Naoki was not late today, and he felt a little better. Today we will explain the three-body technique. When Masaki Yudo's voice fell, most students in the class were a little excited. The students who were still a little absent-minded also raised their attention and looked at the podium intently. Seeing this effect, a smile flashed in Masaki Yudo's eyes. These students come to Jonin school with the ultimate goal of becoming ninjas. However, except for the chakra refining technique taught once in the first grade, most of the time was spent on cultural classes, which made the students a little bored. When I heard that I could learn new ninjutsu, I was naturally very excited. Three-body technique is one of the most basic ninjutsu to become a ninja, and it is the basic skill of the ninja. Masaki Yudo said. Other ninjutsu is difficult to learn, even if you can't learn it. Sansakane jutsu is one of the least difficult ninjutsu. Moreover, the three-body technique is also one of your graduation requirements. If you are not proficient in using the three-body technique, you will not be able to graduate. When the graduation requirements are mentioned, all the students in the class get excited. This is about whether they can become ninjutsu in the future. What you are learning now is the basic three-body technique, which are clone technique, transformation technique and substitute technique. Masaki Yudo adjusted his state and began to use chalk to write down the key points of the three-body technique for the students on the blackboard. Almost all the students were listening carefully, including Kashina and Naoki Asakawa. Although the former is the little princess of the Kingdom of Whirlpool, the Kingdom of Whirlpool has been destroyed at this time, and Kashina can only rely on herself. Although the latter cannot learn ninjutsu, he can record it and use the sage jutsu scroll to convert it into spells that he can learn when he returns home. The first is the clone technique. The clone technique you are learning now is the most basic clone technique. You only need to create an incorporeal shadow clone to complete it. But don't underestimate the clone technique you are learning now. This is the basis for learning other physical clone techniques in the future. This is how the seal and chakra of the clone technique operate. Next is the art of transformation. The art of transformation requires you to control your own chakra to temporarily change objects. Its essence is the art of change. The easiest thing to change in the transformation technique is your own body. You don't have to worry about not being able to change it back, because it is a temporary transformation. It will be cancelled automatically when the chakra is exhausted, or it can be cancelled by itself. This is how the seal and chakra of the transformation technique operate. Finally, there is the substitution technique. The essence of the substitution technique is illusion. When the opponent is distracted, other objects are used to replace oneself, giving the opponent an illusion. This is the substitution technique. This is the way the seal and chakra of substitution technique operate. Quote dot 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 quote. The class teacher, Masaki Yudo, spent half a class explaining all the key points of the three-body technique, and the huge blackboard was completely filled with chalk notes. Fortunately, the students in the audience studied very seriously and lived up to his teachings. Asakawa is quite serious about taking notes. Masaki Yudo looked towards the back row of the classroom. While most students were just looking at the blackboard, Asakawa Naoki was using a notebook to copy down the key points he wrote on the blackboard. Although Asakawa's character is a bit extreme, it is probably because of the sudden death of his parents. Masaki Yudo nodded in his mind, Asakawa Naoki should be a good student in general. There is almost no danger in the three-body technique. Next, you can slowly try the three-body technique, Masaki Yudo looked at the students in the audience and said. But I suggest you take notes on the key points I wrote to prevent you from forgetting them later. The class teacher's reminder immediately woke up the students sitting in the audience, and they all took out their notebooks to take notes. Only a few people had no idea of taking notes, but stood there concentrating chakra. The next moment, as a burst of white smoke emerged, several more identical people appeared in the classroom. However, if you look carefully, you can still see some differences, which proves that the clone technique used by this person is not perfect yet. The clone technique was successful. It's Uchiha Kanman San. And Hayuga Goji San. Nara San also succeeded. And Seru Tobi San. I didn't expect that Namikaze San succeeded in learning the clone technique for the first time. Quote dot 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 quote. There were screams of surprise in the classroom. Unexpectedly, 
while other students were still taking notes and preparing to practice the three-body technique hard after going home, someone had already successfully performed the three-body technique after learning it for the first time. Seeing those students smiling lightly and pretending not to care, or looking expressionless but with pride in their eyes, many students felt the gap between themselves and them. Is this the difference between genius and mortal? Many students have some emotions in their hearts, and Uzumaki Kashina is no exception. Looking at the envy and stubbornness in Kashina's eyes, Asakawa Naoki once again realized the strength of this girl at the same table. I am afraid that she was also secretly determined in her heart that she must learn the three-body technique within today and cannot lose to them. Don't put too much pressure on them. You see, they all come from some great ninja clans. They may have been exposed to the practice of the three-body technique before going to school, so they can learn the three-body technique so quickly. Asakawa Naoki said. The people who performed the clone technique on the spot in the classroom were all great ninjas. The Uchiha clan, Hyuga clan, Nara clan and Serutobi clan were all great ninja clans in Konoha. How could they not have been taught the three-body technique in advance? That's it. Kashina showed her true expression. It turns out that they had all learned it in advance. No wonder they were able to perform the three-body technique as soon as the teacher taught it. That's right, we can just learn our own thing. Asakawa Naoki said. In fact, he was wrong in one thing. As a civilian ninja, Namikaze Minato might really be able to learn it right away, while some students might not be able to learn it until graduation. This is the difference between genius and mortal. However, with such a genius as an opponent, the future will be more interesting. Naoki Asakawa is already looking forward to the end of school. When he gets home, what kind of sage jutsu can the three-body jutsu prove? Chapter 11 Except for the three-body art taught by the head teacher in the morning, the rest of the courses in the ninja school are cultural classes. In the cultural class, Asakawa Naoki divided his mind into two tasks. While listening to the lecture, he controlled the operation of the basic chi refining technique, and finally stayed up until school was over. Naoki, see you tomorrow. Not far from the gate of ninja school, Kashina waved her hand. Well, see you tomorrow. Naoki Asakawa also waved goodbye and quickly rushed to a cheap and large beef restaurant after leaving the ninja school. Boss, three servings of beef rice. Okay, 120 tails. There is an old saying in Naoki Asakawa's previous life in the Celestial Dynasty, the poor in literature and rich in martial arts. If you want to be successful in practicing martial arts, you must have a wealthy family. Because practicing martial arts not only requires a lot of nutrients for the body to grow, but also requires medicinal materials to heal injuries. It also requires weapons, armor, horses and other expensive equipment. Naoki Asakawa has now begun to see that cultivating immortals is not necessarily less expensive than practicing martial arts. Now he is only seven years old. In order to refine more essence to convert into mana, he consumes three or four times more food every day than his peers. When you break through the realm of refining chi and transforming into gods, you won't need to eat so much food to refine your chi. But at that time, we need to consider refining the magic weapon, and the materials required to refine the magic weapon cost a huge sum of money. Fortunately, his appetite is still just a little bigger now, and Asakawa Naoki's savings are still enough. When he breaks through to refine his energy and become a god, he should be strong enough to earn money to buy the materials for the magic weapon. While resources are still sufficient, the most important thing is to maximize strength. Although he had only practiced for two days, his cultivation had only just entered the early stage of refining chi, and his spells could not even ignite the fire of essence, Asakawa Naoki felt that his strength had already made a huge difference. With only the increase in physical strength and the blessing of those few rays of magic power, he was confident that he could defeat the two untrained selves. If he deals with those guys like Taro Yamama again, he can deal with four people by himself without Kashina's help. This is the confidence brought by growth in strength. After returning home and locking the door, Asakawa Naoki quickly returned to his room, closed the door and windows before taking out the white scroll. This time, Asakawa Naoki did not take out his notes first, but sat cross-legged on the bed, holding a scroll in his hand, recalling in his mind the key points of the three-body technique explained by the class teacher Masaki Yudo in class. Perhaps this was also a benefit after time travel. 
he found that his memory became particularly good. Although he couldn't practice directly because he didn't have chakra, Asakawa Naoki completely remembered the practice methods and key points of the three-body technique in his mind when he was taking notes. After completely recalling the three-body technique, Asakawa Naoki opened the white scroll in his hand. Behind the basic chi refining technique and samadhi true fire at the front, a new spell suddenly appeared in the scroll. As expected, Naoki Asakawa immediately understood that as long as he held the scroll, this sage jutsu scroll would transform the ninjutsu he was thinking about into a spell with similar effects. The first time, because he had just finished reading the chakra refining technique left by his original parents, he opened the sage jutsu scroll again, and the basic chi refining technique appeared on the scroll. The second time, he read fire style great fireball Naoki's training method, and after opening the sage jutsu scroll, the samadhi true fire training method appeared. But just now, he did not read the notes of the three-body technique again, but chose to recall the memory of the class in his mind. When he opened the scroll again, a new spell appeared in the scroll. Throwing beans makes an army. Similar to Samadhi True Fire, scattering beans and forming soldiers is also a well-known spell. In his previous life in the Celestial Dynasty, when he was watching the Hokage, he thought about the connection between the art of self-transcendence and the ability to create an army by spreading beans. Unexpectedly, the magic of spreading beans and forming an army actually appeared in front of him. To form an army by sowing beans, you need to use magic in advance to condense the fairy beans according to the spell requirements and store them in the dantian. During battle, if you scatter the fairy beans, you can turn into fairy soldiers and fight. The strength of the transformed fairy weapon is related to the mana injected by the fairy beans. If you don't take the initiative to control it, you will have a certain wisdom to fight against the enemy. When the magic beans are exhausted, the fairy soldiers will disappear naturally. Depending on the strength of your cultivation, there is a certain limit on the number of fairy beans. Refining Chi Realm, 10 pieces. Refining Chi to transform into God Realm, 100 pills. Refining God and returning to the Void Realm, 1000 pieces. Quote dot 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 quote. After reading the introduction of spreading beans and becoming soldiers, a hint of joy flashed in Asakawa Naoki's eyes. As expected of sage jutsu, the effect will never disappoint. Just looking at the introduction, it may be no different from Naruto's shadow clone, Senju Hashirama and Uchiha Madara's wood clone. But there is one advantage that the clone technique does not have, and that is, fairy beans can be stored. This advantage alone makes the use of sewing beans to become soldiers far more useful than various clone techniques. Because the battles between most ninjas are not like Senju Hashirama and Uchiha Madara, which can last three days and three nights before deciding the winner. The battles between most ninjas are more like Ultraman fighting monsters, which will be decided in a short time. Win or lose. In comparison, the preparation time before the battle is quite sufficient. Most physical clone techniques consume a large amount of chakra, and shadow clone directly divides the chakra equally, greatly weakening the strength of the ninja itself. But scattering the beans and forming an army is different. The fairy beans stored before the battle are released without consuming one's own mana. There are only advantages and no disadvantages. However, the final effect still depends on the power of spreading the beans into soldiers. Immediately, Asakawa Naoki began to understand the meaning of spreading beans and becoming a soldier. To be honest, Naoki Asakawa doubted whether his understanding was a little heaven-defying. Whether it was the basic chi refining technique or the samadhi true fire, he could quickly get started, and it was no exception to spread the beans to become an army. It's a pity that there are no other immortal cultivators to use as a reference, and he doesn't know if his learning speed is fast. If ninjas are used as a reference, his learning speed does seem to be quite fast, at least equal to Namikaze Minato who learned the three-body technique in class. Namikaze Minato was able to successfully perform the three-body jutsu the first time he learned it, and Asakawa Naoki was able to successfully perform it the first time he learned it. It seems that although I can't learn ninjutsu, I may be a genius at learning sage jutsu. But, isn't my fairy bean a little unhealthy? Naoki Asakawa looked at the mung bean-sized golden fairy bean in his palm, feeling a little suspicious. According to the description of spreading beans and making a soldier, normal fairy beans are in a mana state and have no entity. 
The physical fairy beans that manifested from the Dantian should be the size of broad beans, but the fairy beans he condensed at the moment were only the size of mung beans. However, Asakawa Naoki thought about it again. He had indeed condensed it just now according to the method recorded in, throwing beans to form a soldier. The only possibility is that his mana was too little. If the first stage of cultivation of immortality, refining gas, is divided into ten levels, then he may have just started, standing on the threshold of the first level of refining gas, which can be regarded as the early stage of the early stage. But this is also the result of condensing all my magic power. At least I can condense it into a human form, right? Go, Naoki Asakawa scattered the fairy beans in his palm to the ground. After a burst of golden light, an immortal soldier with a figure no different from an adult, wearing golden armor and a visor appeared in the room. After the condensation was completed, the immortal soldier quickly knelt down on one knee in the direction of Asakawa Naoki, and made an inhumanly cold sound from his mouth. I will obey the order of the immortal. Asakawa Naoki circled around the mighty golden armored immortal soldiers, no matter how he looked at it, he was satisfied. It is indeed a creation made by spreading beans and forming an army. Not to mention its combat effectiveness, it does look good. Isn't it too noticeable like this? As Asakawa Naoki thought, the appearance of the golden armored immortal soldier gradually changed with his thoughts. In a burst of light, his figure gradually shrank, and the golden armor on his body gradually disappeared. In an instant, the burly golden armored immortal soldier disappeared, replaced by another identical Naoki Asakawa. So the appearance of the immortal soldier can be changed according to my ideas. Naoki Asakawa's eyes showed a bit of surprise. Before, he was a little worried about how to pass the graduation examination of the ninja school. After all, he didn't know ninjutsu at all, and he couldn't learn even the most basic three-skin technique. But it's different now. He can completely replace the three-body technique with the three-body technique in his graduation examination, and his results are even better than those of other students. By the way, the current immortal soldiers still operate automatically based on basic wisdom. What will happen if I take the initiative to control them? Naoki Asakawa closed his eyes and focused on the immortal soldiers in front of him who were exactly the same as himself, following the method described in, throwing beans to become a soldier. When he opened his eyes, Asakawa Naoki seemed to have two pairs of eyes and saw the world from two angles. Let's take a few steps first. Asakawa Naoki controlled the immortal soldier to take two steps forward, as if he was controlling his own body. But this is normal. After all, the immortal soldiers are condensed by their own magic power, so it is normal that they do not reject his control. After controlling the immortal soldiers for a while, he tried to increase the speed of the immortal soldiers. Asakawa Naoki had a great time playing. When he wanted to test the strength of the immortal soldiers, the immortal soldiers turned into a wisp of smoke and disappeared. Sendu's mana has been exhausted. I didn't expect it could only last for such a short time. Naoki Asakawa made a rough estimate of how long the immortal soldiers would last, and I'm afraid it wouldn't even last five minutes. And this is still without fighting. If fighting occurs, the mana in the fairy beans will be consumed faster. However, Naoki Asakawa was not disappointed. The problem can be seen from the size of the fairy beans. Normal fairy beans are the size of broad beans after they materialize, but his own fairy beans are only the size of mung beans, which means that his magic power is still too little. Naoki Asakawa was very satisfied to be able to condense the fairy beans with the magic power he had just practiced for two days. After all, it is very rare to be able to successfully practice the sage jutsu of throwing beans into soldiers. Now his biggest shortcoming is that his cultivation level is too low and he cannot support the two sage jutsus of samadhi true fire and throwing beans into soldiers. So, it's time to practice hard. Asakawa Naoki sat cross-legged, and the basic chi refining technique began to operate. With the assistance of the tempering essence fire technique, his body began to steam, and his skin quickly became rosy. There seems to be a furnace in his body, burning impurities and quenching the essence. Most of the essence is converted into mana to strengthen that ray of mana, and the remaining essence is integrated into the cells, stimulating the potential of each cell. Let his body gradually strengthen on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. There is no time to practice. 
In the two points and one line between ninja school and home every day, Asakawa Naoki has traveled to this world for a year. During this year, Asakawa Naoki never relaxed in his practice. When other students were studying seriously, he was practicing, and when other students were playing, he was also cultivating. Sometimes, he can understand why those practicing madmen practice every day, because it feels really good to become stronger. In this case, one year after traveling to this world and practicing for nearly a year, Asakawa Naoki finally broke through the middle stage of refining chi. At the moment of the breakthrough, Asakawa Naoki felt that his dantian was larger and could hold more mana, and the mana that originally filled the dantian also increased a little with the expansion of the dantian. Finally breaking through the midterm, Asakawa Naoki chuckled, but was keenly noticed by Kashina sitting next to him. Why are you laughing? Kashina asked curiously. Nothing, I remembered some happy things, Asakawa Naoki said with a smile. Happy thing. Kashina looked at Naoki Asakawa and suddenly remembered when they first met a year ago. I remember when Kashina first came to Konoha a year ago, Asakawa was only slightly taller than her when they first met. Over the past year, Asakawa Naoki's height has grown rapidly, and he is almost the tallest in his class. He reached 1.4 meters at the age of 8, almost a head taller than her. It seems that I have to eat more and exercise more in the future, otherwise I will be thrown away by Naoki. Kashina made a small decision in her heart. In fact, due to the quenching of the basic chi refining technique and the true fire of samadhi, Asakawa Naoki is not just a little taller. If someone took off his clothes, they would find that his figure is quite well proportioned. Although he is not as muscular as a muscular man, he can explode with great strength. Although he is only 8 years old, Asakawa Naoki's strength and speed are no longer weaker than those of some adults. Naoki Asakawa also didn't expect that the sage jutsu of Samadhi True Fire would have such a strong effect on body training. Although he has not been able to ignite the essence fire, his body has been quenched perfectly. Naoki Asakawa was also a little lucky that his choice was not wrong. After getting sage jutsu, he did not continue to look for more ninjutsu to confirm it into sage jutsu. Instead, he devoted most of his time and energy to the cultivation of basic chi refining technique and samadhi true fire. No matter how much sage jutsu you learn, it will only increase your attack methods. As for Naoki Asakawa, who had just embarked on the road to immortality, what he lacked was not the means of attack, but the foundation. After learning how to spread the beans and make soldiers, he realized that his cultivation level was still too poor. Without strong cultivation as a foundation, any sage jutsu is boundless water and a tree without roots. No matter how strong the sage jutsu is, it cannot exert its effect. Only when the foundation is strong can the power of sage jutsu be unleashed. A few days ago, when he was about to break through the middle stage of refining gas, Asakawa Naoki tried again to spread the beans to form an army. Using all his magic power, the celestial beans condensed finally reached the size of broad beans. After summoning the immortal soldiers, the duration of the immortal soldiers is far longer than the first time when he used the bean spreading method, and his strength is almost the same as that of Naoki Asakawa himself. If he condensed the fairy beans again now, the strength of the fairy soldiers he summoned would probably be even stronger. The success of sowing beans also proves the importance of foundation at this stage. When you are in the later stage of refining your energy, it is not too late to find more sage jutsu to practice. The next class seems to be a practical class, right? Kashina said looking at the excited class. Yes, Asakawa Naoki nodded. After entering the second grade, ninja school began to have practical courses. It is said to be a practical class, but in fact, the practical class of ninja school is more like the physical education class of Naoki Asakawa's previous life in the Celestial Dynasty. Compared to boring cultural classes, children of about 7 or 8 years old in second grade certainly prefer practical classes that allow them to move. After the first cultural class ended, the head teacher Masaki Yudo walked into the classroom, looked at the many students in the classroom and said, The next class is a practical class. After the break, please gather in the playground. In fact, he didn't need to say anything. Most of the students had already rushed to the playground, including Naoki Asakawa and Kashina Uzumaki. When the school bell rang, the students in class 1 of grade 2 had already gathered. 
first run five laps around the playground to warm up, said the head teacher Masaki Yudo. As soon as he finished speaking, the students rushed out. The playground of the ninja school is nearly 400 meters long, and it is not much different from the playground in Asakawa Naoki's previous life when he was in college. Run five laps around the playground, which is close to 2,000 meters. If Naoki Asakawa was asked to run before the crossing, he might not be able to run such a long distance, but for Naoki Asakawa, who is only eight years old now, it can only be said to be very simple. The physiques of ordinary people and ninjas cannot be generalized. Although most of the students in class 2 are only 8 years old, with the help of chakra, 2,000 meters is not an impossible task. As early as when they entered the second grade, the teacher taught them some long-distance running skills, which can save chakra and physical strength to the greatest extent. But obviously not every student can do this. Although the students with chakra can do it in terms of physical fitness, it is obvious that many of them are somewhat lacking in mentality. They want to express themselves very fast in the first lap, and their physical strength is also exhausted very quickly. Soon, students began to fall behind from the second round. If it were a war, these laggard students would only end up dead. Fortunately, it was just a practical class now, and they would only be given a verbal lesson by the class teacher in the end. But even so, there are still people who keep running at extremely high speeds at the front of the class. In addition to the Uchiha clan, Hyuga clan and several other great ninja clan students, a blonde figure also rushed to the first echelon. In addition, there was also a flowing black-haired figure and a red-haired figure. Needless to say, those students from the great ninja clan have been taught by powerful ninjas since they were young, and they eat far more food than ordinary people. Their starting point is much stronger than ordinary ninjas, so it is normal to run at the front. On the other hand, Namikaze Minato, a civilian genius, even though his resources are not as good as those of the ninja disciples, he has always been at the forefront of class 1 of the second grade in terms of study and actual combat. He can be said to be a real genius. However, I was a bit mistaken. Asakawa has been able to remain in the first echelon. Homeroom teacher Masaki Yudo looked at the people at the front and fell into thinking. In fact, only Minato Namikaze and Naoki Asakawa are the two real civilian ninjas running at the front. Kashina Uzumaki's ability to keep up with the first echelon is largely due to the strong resilience brought by her own Uzumaki bloodline. In fact, Naoki Asakawa could completely surpass those ninja disciples with his physical fitness, run at the front of the class and maintain it until the end, but it was not necessary. It's better to leave the limelight to Minato, he just needs to grow up quietly. After a while, I finally finished running five times around the playground. If someone observes at this time, they may find that the students at the bottom of the rankings are blushing and breathing rapidly, while the ninja students in the first echelon, as well as Namikaze Minato, Asakawa Naoki and Uzumaki Kashina, only have slightly red faces. In fact, the gap between ninjas became apparent from this point on. If students behind the first echelon do not have opportunities in the future, they may not be able to become Jonin in their lifetime. Take a break and prepare for shuriken throwing, Masaki Yudo said. Namikaze, Asakawa, Hayuga and Nara-san, follow me to get the shuriken. Good teacher, the ones Masaki Yudo shouted were only a few students from the first echelon. The physical exertion was not great, and the last one took a basket of shurikens. The shape and size of these shurikens are no different from those commonly used by ninjas. The only difference is that the material is wood. In the process of shuriken training, in order to avoid students being injured as much as possible, it is naturally impossible to use real shuriken directly. Using wooden shuriken can not only ensure training, but also minimize injuries. After they got back the four baskets of shurikens, the other students were almost rested and ready to start throwing shurikens. Before throwing, Masaki Yudo re-explained the key points of shuriken throwing as usual. First of all, the shuriken must not be aimed at teammates. When throwing, you should pay attention to the technique, direction and strength. If you don't find the feeling, you must throw according to the way I teach. After talking about the key points of throwing techniques, Masaki Yudo saw that the students seemed a little unconcerned, and his voice became a little louder, reminding him again of the importance of shuriken throwing techniques. Don't think that fighting between ninjas only involves ninjutsu. In fact, ninjutsu consumes a lot of chakra. 
Most of the battles between Genin and Chunin rely on close combat and long-range shuriken throwing. So, please be serious. The assessment is still the same this time. Throw it at a wooden stake from a distance of 10 meters. If you hit 7 out of 10 shurikens, you will be considered qualified. If you don't pass the test, run 5 more laps around the playground. At the edge of the playground, a row of human-shaped cross-shaped wooden stakes stood on the ground, close to the height of an adult, which was their target. Free practice first, then take the assessment 10 minutes before get out of class. After Masaki Yudo finished speaking, the students quickly dispersed after getting 10 wooden shurikens, looking for human-shaped wooden stakes to practice. Naoki, let's go over there and practice, Kashina said, pointing her green-white index finger at two empty wooden stakes next to each other. Good, Naoki Asakawa nodded and was about to walk towards the two empty wooden piles with Kashina, but one of the wooden piles was hit by a shuriken in advance. Sorry, Asakawa, this is the stake I chose first. A handsome-looking black-haired boy wearing embroidered clothes that looked like table tennis said slowly. Uchiha Kanman, you are going too far. Uzumaki Kashina frowned and looked at Uchiha Kanman. This guy always likes to go against Naoki Asakawa, as if he has a foot in everything. In fact, it's just that Kashina pays too much attention to Asakawa Naoki. In fact, from Asakawa Naoki's perspective, Uchiha Kanman not only troubles him, but also often troubles Namikaze Minato. But he could also tell that this guy was not bad at heart. It was probably because they were so eye-catching and he wanted to express himself by defeating them. Tell me what you want to do. Naoki Asakawa sighed. Although the students of the ninja school are future ninjas, they are still too childish and eager to express themselves. However, in this non-peaceful ninja world, everyone is encouraging this kind of competition, which also promotes fighting among ninja school students in disguise. Okay, come and compete with me to see whose shuriken has a higher hit rate. Uchiha Kanman said with a smile, his eyes full of confidence that he would win. The shuriken throwing technique is one of the Uchiha clan's signature ninjutsu, and the other signature ninjutsu is the fire-style great fireball technique. Then come. Asakawa Naoki said nonchalantly, you will definitely lose if you compete with our Uchiha clan in shuriken throwing techniques. Uchiha Kanman's eyes are full of confidence that he will win. Even though he has not opened Sharingan yet, he has been training shuriken throwing since he was not yet in Jonin school. Naoki Asakawa and others only started practicing shuriken in their second grade. I don't know how much stronger the throwing is. Clearly, you are the challenger. Naoki Asakawa smiled helplessly, sometimes even he had to admit that the gap between geniuses and mortals cannot be erased by time. Although ninjutsu cannot be learned because it lacks chakra, chakra is not required for shuriken throwing. Come on, let's see who has a higher hit rate with 10 shuriken shots each time. After Uchiha Kanman finished speaking, he was 10 meters away from the human-shaped wooden stake. The remaining nine wooden shurikens in his hand flew out like a goddess scattering flowers, and then all of them were accurately pierced into the head of the human-shaped wooden stake. See, this is the strength of the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Kanman laughed wildly. Among the second year class one, he was indeed proud of himself. Even the other students from the great ninja clan were not as accurate as him in throwing shurikens. Only Namikaze Minato and Asakawa now were born commoners. The tree can catch up with him. You know, it is not difficult for ordinary shuriken to be stuck on a wooden stake, but if the same wooden shuriken is to be stuck on a wooden stake, strength and skill are indispensable. Moreover, Uchiha Kanmenza was very accurate and all hit the head of the wooden stake, which shows that he has strong control of the shuriken. But, is this maniacal laughter a genetic trait of the Uchiha clan? Looking at Uchiha Kanman's wild laughter, Asakawa Naoki couldn't help but think of Uchiha's laughing for. It's your turn, Asakawa. Uchiha Kanman stopped smiling and reminded him aloud. Um, Naoki Asakawa nodded and threw the shurikens in his hand one by one with regular movements. There are no fancy moves, and it's not like Uchiha Kanman throws it all at once, but the end result is the same. All ten shurikens thrown by Asakawa Naoki were stuck on the heads of the wooden stakes, which was the same result as Uchiha Kanman's. Come again. Uchiha Kanman's eyes burned with something called, fighting spirit. He recognized an opponent like Naoki Asakawa. Recovering their respective shurikens, 
Uchiha Kanman once again quickly threw all ten shurikens like a show of skill, and finally all of them were stuck on the head of the wooden stake. Naoki Asakawa still threw the shurikens one after another calmly. Although the speed was slightly slower, they still all stuck on the head of the wooden stake. Come again. Quote dot 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 quote. As the two of them continued to hit the wooden stakes, both of them knew in their hearts that the current situation was to see who couldn't hold on first. The one who made the mistake first would lose. While the two were competing, the surrounding students from class 1, grade 2 also stopped throwing and looked over. Uchiha and Asakawa, both of them are so strong. Forget about Uchiha Kanman. After all, their clan's throwing skills are very strong. I didn't expect Asakawa, who was ordinary before, to be so strong. It's already the 10th round, right? The two of them haven't made any mistakes yet. They have a 100% hit rate. Not only ordinary students, but also students from the ninja clan are watching this competition. Even if they don't want to admit it in their hearts, Uchiha Kanman and Asakawa Naoki are indeed at the top of their class in throwing skills. Namikaze Minato is also paying attention to this competition. Even he probably thinks that he cannot do better than the two people in the field. Tell me, will Uchiha-san win or Asakawa-san will win? Probably Uchiha. The Uchiha clan has the strongest throwing skills. Looking at the situation, Uchiha-san's throwing skills should be the strongest among the second graders. Believe Uchiha-san, you will win. Seeing all the support from the classmates around Uchiha Kanman, Uzumaki Kashina felt a little dissatisfied. Naoki is the strongest. Quote dot 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 quote. Seeing the students in class 1 of the second grade supporting both sides, the head teacher Masaki Yudo did not stop them. Instead, he looked at these children with interest. It is this kind of competition that can cultivate truly strong men. On the battlefield, a powerful ninja can withstand hundreds or even thousands of enemy ninjas. But in the center of a group of people watching, as the physical strength of the two people was rapidly depleted, the outcome was about to be announced. I won't lose. Uchiha Kanman tried his best to control the wooden shuriken in his hand, but his trembling fingers revealed his lack of physical strength. You used up too much energy when you first started. Naoki Asakawa reminded that Uchiha Kanman thought he could defeat him quickly, so he consumed too much energy in the beginning by showing off his skills. Now after more than 10 rounds of throwing, Uchiha Kanman's physical strength is exhausted, and his throwing speed can't even keep up with Naoki Asakawa. I will win, the Uchiha clan is the strongest. As if Uchiha Kanman had been given a shot of stimulant, his throwing speed instantly became faster, and the remaining shurikens in his hand hit the heads of the wooden stakes one after another. However, if you look carefully, you can see that the depth of these shurikens stuck on the wooden stakes is a little shallow, and some are even crumbling, indicating that the throwing force has been greatly reduced. At this moment, Uchiha Kanman and Asakawa Naoki only had the last shuriken in their hands. But unlike Uchiha Kanman's trembling fingers, Asakawa Naoki's fingers were as steady as an old dog, and it was impossible to tell what they looked like after more than 10 rounds of throwing. It's time to decide the winner. Everyone watching had a decision in their hearts, Uchiha Kanman was going to lose. But Uchiha Kanman himself still felt a little unwilling to accept his fate. As if he wanted to use his last strength, the power of throwing the shuriken in his hand increased sharply, but his trembling fingers caused some changes in the direction of the shuriken. Careful, ah, as everyone screamed, Uchiha Kanman's shuriken came out, but it did not hit the wooden stake, but hit the whirlpool kashina, which was closer to the two. The shuriken thrown with full force was very fast and was about to hit kashina's eyes. The students who couldn't bear it had already closed their eyes, fearing to see her being stabbed by the shuriken. Masaki Yuto's pupils trembled slightly as he watched from a distance, but the distance was too far, and he was only a chunin, so there was no way he could shoot down the shuriken before it hurt Kashina. Kashina also seemed to be frightened. She didn't have time to avoid it, but instinctively wanted to cover her eyes with her hands. But because of the sudden incident, Kashina couldn't cover her eyes in time. At the critical moment, Another faster shuriken flew from the other direction, accurately flying towards the shuriken that was about to hit Kashina. The two shurikens collided and made a muffled sound. The kinetic energy contained in them cancelled each other out, and finally fell in two directions without any lethality. In the direction where the shuriken flew, Naoki Asakawa looked at Kashina with some concern. 
The shuriken that knocked down Uchiha Kanman's shuriken was his last shuriken. Are you okay? Naoki Asakawa walked quickly to Kashina and expressed concern. The latter just shook his head. He was indeed a little frightened when the shuriken flew just now, but he is fine now. Uchiha Kanman, you almost caused a disaster. You will be on duty for one week as punishment. Masaki Yudo said seriously. I'm sorry, I know, teacher. Uchiha Kanman lowered his head and said. I'm sorry, Uzumaki-san, I accidentally let go and almost hurt you. Uchiha Kanman bent down and apologized to Uzumaki Kashina. Please pay more attention in the future. Kashina excused herself. Anyone with a discerning eye can see that Uchiha Kanman did not do it on purpose, and that the shuriken was indeed released by accident. It wasn't intentional, and he didn't really hurt himself. He had never bullied him because of his red hair. Kashina was not a stingy person, so she naturally forgave him. Asakawa-kun, I am indeed not as good as you in shuriken throwing. Uchiha Kanman finally looked at Asakawa Naoki, with a bit of admiration and fighting spirit in his eyes. The last shuriken shot just now, Asakawa Naoki came from behind and shot down Uchiha Kanman's shuriken before it could hurt Kashina. The difficulty of throwing a fixed target with a shuriken is different from that of a moving target, let alone hitting another thrown shuriken with a shuriken. Anyone with a discerning eye can see that Naoki Asakawa's shuriken throwing is stronger than Uchiha Kanman. However, I will surpass you in the future. Uchiha Kanman declared a challenge. Okay. Naoki Asakawa nodded and smiled. I'll give you time to catch up until you can't see my back. After embarking on the path to immortality, he never worried that anyone would surpass him. Asakawa Naoki will work hard to catch up with those who are stronger than him at the moment, but those who are weaker than him now will only become farther and farther away from him in the future, until he can no longer even see their backs. Speaking big words is arrogant, but telling the truth is high-spirited. Hearing Naoki Asakawa's confident words, for some reason the students present felt that what he said was true. Looks like the future won't be boring. Not far away, Namikaze Minato stopped throwing. On the wooden pile 10 meters in front of him, all 10 shurikens were stuck on the head of the wooden pile. Like Asakawa Naoki, Namikaze Minato's shurikens have all hit since class. Okay, let's start gathering. Everyone will give me a test. If you hit 7 out of 10 shurikens, you will be considered qualified. Masaki Yudo said. If you fail, run 5 laps around the playground and get dismissed from get out of class. The day's classes end quickly, but after the second grade, there is still a training period after school in the afternoon, and all students need to stay in school for training. Either run to exercise your physical fitness, throw shuriken, or practice the three-body technique. In short, train in whatever aspect you are weak in. Needless to say, Asakawa Naoki doesn't know the three-body technique at all, so he doesn't need to practice. Running to exercise physical fitness is not as fast as the Samadhi True Fire. The 2,000 meters run in each practical class is enough for him to adapt to the physical strength. So he can only practice shuriken throwing. Shuriken throwing does not use chakra and can only be regarded as a technique, so it cannot be transformed into sage jutsu. Naoki Asakawa's ability to defeat Uchiha Kanman in shuriken throwing is indeed the result of his hard work. There is also the influence of entering the path of cultivating immortals. Although he did not use magic power when throwing, his body became stronger and stronger under the scorching fire of Samadhi True Fire, as if his muscles were being washed and his marrow was being purged. Not only has his speed and strength improved, but his dynamic vision, reflexes and body control are far beyond what he used to be. Only on this basis can he easily defeat Uchiha Kanman. Go, Naoki Asakawa threw all ten shurikens in his hand at once, and with a few whizzes, they all hit the heads of ten wooden stakes. The difficulty was higher than Uchiha Kanman's Tenio Sanka. He can also throw this way, but because it consumes too much physical strength, Asakawa Naoki didn't show it. Naoki, let's go. Uzumaki Kashina's training has also ended. Unlike Naoki Asakawa who only practices shuriken throwing, Kashina's growth is quite balanced. The training time is almost evenly divided, running for 20 minutes, practicing throwing techniques for 20 minutes, and finally practicing for 20 minutes. Three body technique. Um, Naoki Asakawa nodded, packed up the wooden shurikens and put them in the warehouse, and then left the ninja school with Kashina. 
Thank you for that today, Kashina said gratefully, with a bit of a blush on her face after a long distance run. You're welcome, we are friends, Asakawa Naoki said with a smile. Well, Kashina lowered her head without looking at him and continued, Actually, I have always wanted to ask, why did Naoki become friends with me? Maybe it's because I can't stand Taro Yamayama and his friends bullying you, so I want to help you. Asakawa Naoki said truthfully. At that time, he was about to drop out of school because he could not refine chakra. Taro Yamagami and the others who bullied Kashina Uzumaki in the classroom could be said to have hid Naoki Asakawa's gun. At that time, they thought that they would not come to school in a few days anyway, and beating the bully would not be a loss in this rebirth. Then I might have to thank them. Kashina smiled, her silver bell-like laughter was very sweet, and her smile was as bright as a flower. Perhaps because of the fright in the practical class, the girl completely opened her heart to Asakawa Naoki at this moment, allowing him to see the girl's true appearance. Because her family and country were ruined, she suddenly came to the unfamiliar Konoha village. Uzumaki Kashina has always maintained a tough appearance, hiding her soft heart deeply. Although she is only an eight-year-old girl, she is more mature than boys of the same age, strong. Only when she gets along with Naoki Asakawa, will she show her inner tenderness in a small way. Maybe, Naoki Asakawa sighed, if Taro Yamayama and the others hadn't bullied Kashina, given Naoki Asakawa's character, he probably wouldn't have taken the initiative to say hello to the girls, and would have just sat silently in the last row practicing or studying alone. And without the help of Naoki Asakawa, Kashina, who has just arrived and is wary of strangers, might not have known him, let alone opened her heart to him. In the end, only the tool man Taro Yamayama who took a beating and the four injured world came to an end. Don't worry, as long as I'm here from now on, I won't let anyone bully you. Asakawa Naoki chuckled. Um, the girl nodded, her mouth slightly raised, her eyes full of smiles, her face rosy, as if two red clouds were rising, but fortunately it was not obvious against the red hair. Kashina, you won't get it wrong, right? Asakawa Naoki felt a little headache in his heart. In the ninja world, due to war, people's lifespan is generally short, which makes children extremely mature, and many people fall in love in their teens. Even in the peaceful time of the future, Naruto and Shaoli began to like Sakura when they were in ninja school, Hanada liked Naruto, and Sakura liked Sasuke, not to mention the current turmoil. Naoki Asakawa really doesn't like children who don't even have full hair. He's not a lolicon, he prefers older ones. He and Kashina are really just helping each other between friends, but without knowing whether Kashina has any misunderstandings, it is difficult for him to explain and it is easy for him to fall over. In the end, the two of them said goodbye at the ninja school, waved and walked towards their respective homes, and this embarrassing situation finally ended. Saying goodbye to Kashina, Naoki Asakawa walked towards his home alone. Along the way, Asakawa Naoki thought a lot. The first is naturally the relationship between Uzumaki Kashina and Namikaze Minato. Having watched Hokage Ninja, Asakawa Naoki actually likes the pairing of Kashina and Minato. But watching anime is watching anime, and reality is reality. In reality, Kashina is a living person, not an object that can be given to others. If he really likes it, he will not let it go. As for whether Minotaur Minato will feel guilty, he is the god of war and pure love. The so-called Minotaur is someone who seizes other people's spouses. If Minato and Kashina already know each other and like each other, then he will sincerely wish this couple a happy marriage. But the current situation is that they have only known each other for a short time, and their relationship is no different from that of ordinary classmates, with no emotional foundation at all. Can this kind of relationship, which has no special feelings and is more like ordinary classmates, be called a tauren? However, Naoki Asakawa's feelings for Kashina are not that obvious now, but more like friendship, so he is also a little hesitant. Forget it, if you are so weak now, how can you have time to talk about feelings? Asakawa Naoki shook his head and threw away all unnecessary thoughts. Now he is very similar to his previous life, he instinctively ignores feelings. But in his previous life, it was because he had no money, but now he is because he is too weak. Arriving at the commercial street, Asakawa Naoki ate five bowls of ramen at the ramen shop as usual, 
supplementing the food he needed to practice the basic chi refining technique and samadhi true fire in the evening, and then slowly left under the boss's unconcerned eyes. Boss, is this kid a ninja from the Akamaiki clan? He has a huge appetite. A customer asked curiously. Probably not a child of the Akamaiki family. He is quite thin and looks very handsome. I don't know, maybe a ninja who is practicing physical skills. The boss shook his head and smiled. It's a blessing to be able to eat. As long as you give me money and don't waste it, I will support it. Naoki Asakawa ignored the conversation between the boss and the guests, and was immersed in the operation of the basic chi refining technique. Naoki Asakawa, who was obsessed with practicing, did not notice that the number of pedestrians on this road home was getting smaller and smaller. Although this road home is usually sparsely populated, at least there are still some people passing by. But today, not only is there almost no one on this road, Konoha's pedestrians seem to be subconsciously avoiding this place when passing by. If there is a ninja with keen mental ability and strong observation ability, he might find that there seems to be mysterious genjutsu arranged around this road. Under the influence of genjutsu, pedestrians who want to pass by this road will instinctively avoid this road and choose other roads to reach their destination. On the other hand, Naoki Asakawa, who has practiced the basic chi refining technique, although his mental power has not yet been transformed into divine consciousness, his powerful mental power is stronger than that of most ninjas, and he is more resistant to genjutsu. Unfortunately, the powerful genjutsu resistance did not bring him any benefit at this moment, but pushed him into danger. If he was possessed of genjutsu like ordinary people and instinctively avoided this place and went home in another direction, he might not have entered this place. At a certain moment, Asakawa Naoki woke up from his training state, and there was no one around him. What's going on? Asakawa Naoki's pupils were slightly dilated, and he felt a sense of crisis in his heart. It's still Konoha's 35th year, and the Second Ninja War has not yet broken out. Asakawa Naoki thought that there wouldn't be much danger in Konoha, so he dared to practice on the way home. Unexpectedly, he would be putting himself in danger now. However, these genjutsu are probably not aimed at me. By now, Naoki Asakawa would be a real fool if he hadn't noticed the genjutsu around him. However, he also guessed that the battle in front of him was probably not against him. After all, he was probably a novice and was taken away casually, so it was impossible for him to spend such a large amount of money. So, as long as I walk home peacefully, nothing will happen. Although he thought so in his heart, Asakawa Naoki did not relax at all, his vigilance was fully heightened, but on the surface he pretended not to notice it as before. How did this guy get in? A glance swept over Naoki Asakawa, but after thinking for a moment, seeing that Naoki Asakawa didn't show any abnormality, he finally decided not to alert the snake. The mentally sharp Naoki Asakawa noticed this vague gaze, but did not show any abnormality. Until his eyes glanced at him without any other movement, Asakawa Naoki knew that he should be safe. My heart relaxed a little, but Asakawa Naoki's body did not change at all, not even the heart rate changed at all. As long as we can get there. Asakawa Naoki has vaguely seen the village at the end of his sight, which is his residence. Although the place where I live is considered remote in Konoha, there are still many Konoha villagers living there. The person who set this trap should not dare to cause trouble there. So as long as I can get home, I should be fine. At this moment, Asakawa Naoki's longing for home reached its peak. He had never had such a strong sense of belonging to home, whether in his previous life or this life. But, at the same moment, a girl with black hair wearing black clothes and a gentle and gentle appearance slowly walked out from the back of the road. It turns out she is the real target. The moment he discovered the black-haired girl, Asakawa Naoki determined in his heart that the black-haired girl was the target of the mastermind behind the scenes. Although he didn't know her, Asakawa Naoki felt a temperament from her that was only found in a big family, which was completely different from that of a child born from a commoner family. Although Kashina has a straightforward personality and looks similar to a commoner child, Naoki Asakawa also felt a similar temperament from her, which is a temperament that a big family can cultivate since childhood. Sure enough, the moment the black-haired girl appeared, the mastermind who had once glanced at Naoki Asakawa finally took action. It was a chain that shot out from the nearby woods and wound around the black-haired girl as flexibly as a snake. 
After experiencing a moment of panic, the black-haired girl quickly adjusted herself and quickly retreated toward the back with light steps. But the flexibility of the chain was beyond the girl's imagination, and it actually turned a corner and continued to wrap around the black-haired girl. Just when the chain was about to wrap around the girl's body, a stone flew out from the other side, accurately interrupting the force attached to the chain, causing the snake-like flexible chain to fall to the ground. The ninja hiding on the roadside looked in the direction of Naoki Asakawa. The moment he threw the stone, he quickly turned around and ran in the opposite direction from where the black-haired girl came. You kid, if I had known, I would have dealt with him first. The ninja behind the scenes didn't expect that his Jonin's attack would be blocked by a child from the ninja school. Although he wanted to get rid of Naoki Asakawa who ruined their plan, the ninja behind the scenes finally chose to chase the girl in black. While Naoki Asakawa was helping the black-haired girl to rescue the siege, a conspiracy was going on in a quaint building in the Uchiha clan's territory. Did they succeed in the moment? A middle-aged man asked. It should be no problem, third elder. A slightly younger person replied. Satsuna is the new Jonin of our Uchiha clan. He possesses the three Magatama Sharingan. He will not fail against a little girl who is not even a ninja. Third brother, don't worry too much. What you should be thinking about is how to force the old guy to transfer power to us after capturing the Grand Elder's granddaughter. Another middle-aged man who looked older said. Second Elder, Third Elder, have we gone too far in using Makoto to threaten the First Elder? Another young Uchiha tribesman said with some suspicion. Junji, you still don't have enough wisdom. The Third Elder taught him a lesson. Those who achieve great things don't stick to trivial matters. If we don't take action now, I'm afraid we, the Uchiha clan, will become the weaklings of the clan leader and the great elder in the future. When Uchiha Madara and Senju Hashirama led the Uchiha clan and the Hans clan to jointly establish Konoha, it was clearly agreed that Senju Hashirama would be the first Hokage, and when he abdicates, Uchiha Madara would be the second Hokage. In the end, when Konoha was built, the second Hokage was handed over to Senju Tobarama. And just giving us the Uchiha clan a position in the Konoha police department is really too much. It's okay not to wait for Konoha who has broken his promise. I didn't expect that the clan leader and the great elders would be content with the status quo and eat Konoha's charity with gusto. We, the Uchiha clan, will never be a dog on a leash. So, now let's see how much the old guy values his precious granddaughter. Obviously, the people sitting in this room are all members of the Uchiha clan, but to be precise, they should be the hawks of the Uchiha clan. After Senju Hashirama and Uchiha Madara established Konoha, the Uchiha clan was relatively united at first. Until Uchiha Madara left Konoha, although no Uchiha clan members left with Uchiha Madara, cracks began to appear within the Uchiha family. The thoughts of the patriarch and three elders who hold most of the power of the Uchiha clan began to go further and further. The clan leader and the great elder support the joint construction of Konoha, and are considered the doves or moderates in the family. The second elder and third elder are more supportive of launching a rebellion to seize power in Konoha and regain the position of second Hokage stolen by Senju Tobarama. They are hawks or hardliners. The current situation of the Uchiha clan is that the dove power controlled by the clan leader and the first elder far exceeds the hawkish power controlled by the second and third elders. Therefore, if they want to launch a rebellion, they must take away the power of the great elders and clan leaders and unify the Uchiha clan. The great elders' children both died in a mission early on, leaving only one precious granddaughter, Uchiha Makoto, who was also his only weakness. This is why the hawks want to kidnap Uchiha Makoto. They want to see whether the power in their hands is more important or the only granddaughter. Do you realize your mistake? Shunsuke, the second elder also looked at Uchiha Shunsuke with sharp eyes. For this junior who started the three Magatama Sharingan in just his twenties, they still hope that he can go further. I understand, two elders. Uchiha Shunsuke lowered his head and admitted his mistake. It's a good boy to correct your mistakes when you know they are wrong. The third elder said with a hearty smile. No one noticed that in the eyes of Shunsuke Uchiha who bowed his head to admit his mistake, two scarlet three Magatama Sharingan were slowly flowing. What the patriarch and the great elder said is indeed correct. The second elder and the third elder have gone crazy, and they don't even want to spare Uchiha's own clan members. 
If they are led by them, the Uchiha clan will be pushed to the end of the world. Their standards are still too low. We must inform the clan leader and great elder of Satsuna's actions so that they can resolve it as soon as possible. This is a family matter of the Uchiha clan. If Anbu finds out, the trust in the Uchiha clan may be exhausted. While various thoughts flashed through Uchiha Shunsuke's mind, a piece of information was conveyed by him using a special ninjutsu. If Naoki Asakawa knew what happened here, he would probably only sigh, the Uchiha family is indeed rich in children. Whether it is Uchiha Shunsuke, or Uchiha Shisui and Uchiha Itachi in the original Hokage world, they are all talented ninjas who have high hopes from their families and tribesmen, but in the end they became the second and fifth sons who betrayed them. But at this moment, Asakawa Naoki has no time for jokes. He is experiencing a life and death crisis. To be precise, the black-haired girl is experiencing a life and death crisis. At this moment, Asakawa Naoki did not recognize that the black-haired girl in front of him, who looked two or three years older than Kashina and had a gentle and soft face, was Uchiha Makoto, who gave birth to Itachi and Sasuke in the future. But he recognized that she was a student of the ninja school. Although they were not in the same grade and did not know her name, Asakawa Naoki had seen her during recess at ninja school. The first sneak attack failed. The Uchiha who was hiding on the roadside did not continue to hide. Instead, he quickly approached Uchiha Makoto in a few instants. At this moment, Uchiha was dressed in black, with traces of disguise on his face, and without any forehead protector or other items on his body that could indicate his identity. The first time he saw Uchiha, Asakawa Naoki did not discover his identity as an Uchiha clan, but he thought of the Kumo Ninja Village Ninja who wanted to kidnap Kashina Uzumaki and Hayuga Hanada twice in Hokage. Although his life was not in danger when he was kidnapped, it is foreseeable that once he is captured in another village, he may not even be counted as a human being in the future, but can only be regarded as a reproductive tool, a tool to produce blood for them and limit their inheritance. I can escape because I am too weak now. Moreover, I helped her block it just now. If he continues to escape this way, the most likely thing he will do is capture the girl. That way, I'll be safe. Asakawa Naoki kept comforting himself in his heart. He had helped the black-haired girl just once, and no one could blame him for running away now. However, even though he had woven thousands of reasons in his mind, he still couldn't pass the test in his heart. This world is not the two-dimensional Hokage world he saw on the screen in his previous life, but the real ninja world. In this world, when a person dies, he or she really dies. He can't just ignore death, because now there is still a glimmer of hope. Thinking of this, Asakawa Naoki made an instant decision. While running forward, five fairy beans merged into one in his dantian. Realizing the five-in-one senzo, Naoki Asakawa hid its aura to the extreme, turned it into a transparent form, and threw it in the direction of Uchiha Makoto's escape with a special technique. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.